Go ahead, I'm about to start this. Y'all ready? First guess. Got the homie show off and the pull up. Bang, what's the deal, nigga? What's good, bro? <laughs> shit, nigga, just warned us some noodles and shit. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, got the rub on. <laughs> yeah, bro, just chilling, bro. Just chilling. Appreciate you inviting me on this shit, nigga. Real G shit. This shit yeah, hard. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, bro, man. Thanks for even pulling up, bro. Real shit. Hell yeah, hell yeah, bro. How you doing over there, bro? Everything solid? Yeah, man, just dealing with, you know, uh, and why we got this, all these hurricanes and this floods going on. So, you know, everybody just trying to, you know, stay 10 tones down and, you know, just hold it down pretty much. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I like your little setup, bro. How you got the little background and this shit? Yeah, shit bro. Hard. Yeah, that's a fact, bro. Nigga official, but yeah, man, like I said, bro, thanks for coming on, man. I had reached out to you. You know, you was out the country and you said as soon as you touched back, you know, you was going to pull up to the show. So definitely, you know, salute you for doing that. Man, bro, I got to keep my word, keep my word. Yeah, that's that's a fact, bro. So let's get into it, though, bro. Let everybody know, you know, your name, where you from, you know, everything about your dance, everything, bro. Yo, yo, it's your boy, Show Off, Twin Street Bully. Um, the group that I'm affiliated with is, uh, you already know, Miho Buzz, Hooligan Squad, Physical Poets, Murder Season, my fam. And um, I just want to say, bro, like I've been crumping 15 years. So, like, it's been, like, about uh, roughly eight years since I've been, like, under Miho. So just pushing, uh, I started off as Baby Street Bully, now I'm Twin Street Bully. So I've been pushing it hard with the fam and everything like that. But yeah, like um, my bro was saying, man, um, I was in Costa Rica going to visit my girl, and um, I made sure that I would go keep my word and actually come on the show and like give you guys some like some little output about me, who I am, and what I experienced and stuff. Like I wanted to, I actually wrote down some notes too because I'm off the, you know, I'm drinking, nigga. Like you feel me? <laughs> yeah. I wanna, I wanna make sure, nigga, I'm getting out good shit. So I wrote down some shit, that, like some highlights and shit that like I think mm -hmm. it'll be dope talking about, like you know. I, I I wrote down some shit like one of my buckets moments that inspired me growing up, bro. Like when I was like 16, 15, coming up in the crumb game, it was this it was this highlight clip of uh, Hitman, bro. Hitman dance in Hawaii, like um that that clip really like it really made me want to dance, like bro, and like I actually be creative as him too. And another one that struck me too around that era, it was like Hurricane versus Hitman. Y'all knew mm -hmm. that battle. It was beefing and everything that, that Sega. So those was crazy highlights for me too, bro. And I wanted to talk about my my first experience becoming um, a bull, bro. Becoming under Miho and getting my name and everything like that. Um, I got invited to this meeting, bro. Like at the vote. Uh, if you're on the west side, you know what the vote is. It's mm -hmm. like basically the skate park and stuff where they threw a lot of the rims and they threw a lot of like the impact sessions and stuff there. So um, Solo and Crush invited me to come down there, that come to this meeting and stuff. I already kind of figured, like, in my head, like, I think they go going to ask me to be under Miho, but I wasn't for sure, you feel me? So when I got there and everything like that, I, I was still thinking in my head, like, these niggas probably go try to bottle me, bro. So I came, like, packed for my, my backpack, my luggage and shit, like, all my shit in there and my gear. So I get there, bro, and come inside. Like, this nigga... This nigga solo knocked the fuck out, bro, on this little bitch. Like, he sleep, glasses on the side of his face. And I'm like, where the fuck is Crush at? Crush is sleep underneath his beanbag. Like, knocked the fuck out, bro. And I'm like, I'm so confused, nigga, because I'm thinking, like, these niggas finna, like, pack me out like or pit me on or whatever. But it was just, like, the opposite. Like, they was chilling, doing all kind of work and shit, so niggas probably got tired and shit. But I was like, nigga, wake the fuck up, bro. Like, what is this, nigga? So they get themselves situated and shit. Like, yo, bro, we've been watching you dance for some time on, and um, we just want to give you a good opportunity. If, if you accept it, like, would you want to be, um, like, on the Bulls fam? You feel me? Like, like well, mijo. And I'm like, I was shocked myself, bro. Like, you feel me? Like, because in, I, in an era in Crump, I had beef with Solo coming up, you know? So just mm -hmm. like... At I's house, like when I stayed on Broadway, me and me and Solo kind of like bump heads at the time when we battled. You feel me? This is when Aim was out. So I was just like, you know, coming up through time though, I still looked up to Solo. I still looked up to Crush. So just to hear them say that they've been watching my style and watching me elevate within Crunk, 
was just like a uh, big uplifting for myself. Like, dang, bro, like these is niggas like I watched on the DVDs or I was like ditching school, bro, to go in the, um, like either the library to try to like look at these niggas, bro. You mm -hmm. know, so to be in the same room with them and, and to hear them saying that they're giving me opportunity and the name that they gave me was um, Baby Street Bully. And Solo was like, well, I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna be saying like B Street, bro. You feel me? Like, that's what I'm gonna call you. So mm -hmm. I'll just like that from that, like, don't call me Baby Street Bully, nigga, call me B Street. Cause I like, you know, Solo, Solo gave me that name, that ring. So that shit was, that shit was just super amazing, bro. And I always click with Miho, but we ain't never really like, we ain't really like, at that time, like, um, I ain't really got to bond with him like on some brother brotherhood shit. So when I did get bond with him it was it was pretty crazy, bro. I was um over there like in um Compton. I was at I was at, I got on the train at the Compton station and shit. My hood is like the next one over. Like I'm in Watts. So you got Compton, then you got Watts is the next station. So I'm gonna get off on Watts, but when I get on on Compton and I'm about to get off on Watts, Miho get on the train and he's like right in front of me. That shit was so fucking awkward, bro. I'm like, what the fuck? It's a creator of crimp. Like, you, what you doing in my hood, nigga? Like, what you, you got a bunch of flyers with him and shit. He was like, um, having um a birthday party coming up and shit. So he's like, yo, bro, I got um a little um, mansion party shit coming up and everything like that for my birthday, bro. Like, like slide through if you free, nigga. Drinks, shit, smoke, nigga. It's gonna be some chill shit. Like, come fuck with me. Like, you going to the eight one eight tonight? Around this time, I was looking for like. I was looking for my own little spot, like you feel me, like a little studio, like or a little one bedroom apartment. So I was mm -hmm. going to like, uh, I was going to another part of like the area, like it was like Whittier and shit. So it was cool, nigga. Like I popped up at the eight one eight that night, and I got to get some shit off my chest and shit. And he was there, so I just kept doing shit that Miho does. So like I would do all a lot of his old shit in my rounds, and bro was tripping out, like going crazy, like he was just like tripping out, like who is this nigga? Like, um, that's show off, bro. Like, this and that. So, I guess from that time on, they all was already already talking, bro. So, it's just a blessing to actually have him in my fam and have him to be, I'll say, a brother, a, a big role model to me, and also help me with my anger, bro. It's like learning how to channel this shit. Like, that's somebody mm -hmm. that I don't, I don't idolize him, but I look at him as like a big brother. It's more than just. Oh, this is my big homie in Crunk. This is somebody that I talk to uh, like as a mentor too. You feel me? So that nigga helped me out in so much, bro. I, I was telling the homies, bro. Around the time when my um my mom had passed, bro. My mom died like eight years ago from cancer, bro. So um lung cancer. So um when we was having a funeral, it was in my hood. You know, like uh, Miho came through. This nigga Thrills came through. Um, Brandon and Sideshow Bob, he came through too. Like, I was shocked they ever came, bro, because I'm just like, nigga, I got, like, I got, like, all these Crips in my, my set, you feel me? My mom and my dad is, like, you know, they Crips, you feel mm -hmm. me? So, we got all, like, the whole hood there, bro, and just to see my big homie in my hood, it was dope, bro, but it was just, like, <laughs> it was funny because I was like, yo, this nigga, you know me whole big, he a big mm -hmm. nigga, bro. So, this nigga's, like, labbing, like, in a, in a set, and with Crump, we use our hands, like, they do they do different stuff like the the actually share the language so mm -hmm. like signs and all this stuff in the gang world they mean something so miho's doing that i'm already looking at the ogs and like you know my niggas like they put a press because you feel me if i don't say nothing you feel me like um and i know miho he ain't the type of nigga that go just like that slide by he ended up fighting them niggas you feel me so i was like before things escalate let me like introduce him to everybody that's here and shit so that shit could just like dead you feel me be dead so i'm like yeah this um this my big homie and everything like that he be on tour with madonna beyonce all that shit like that like um he's been a big like influence to me in life and like you know he's been helping me get up and shit like that like this my dog so they all welcome him in like oh that's what's up nigga like um yada yada nice to meet you bro we it's an honor to have you in the hood like this and that yada, yada. mind you my uncle like, he never let me get in his charger. He don't never let me get in the whip, my nigga. He don't never let me chill in the car with this nigga. But that day, that nigga happened to, like, let me chill in the whip and shit with this nigga and shit. Like, it was just, it was just funny as fuck. Because uh, I asked Miho, like, hey, nigga, like, is it something that you, like, you want? Like, you know, I, I can I can get it for you. You feel me? Like, he like, give me a dub, nigga. Me, we smoking. Me, him, thrills. 
smoking in a whip with my uncle and shit. It was a classic moment, bro. Super classic moment. And um, I just want to say no another thing, too, so I can start telling y'all some more scoop about shit. Like, um, like, it used to be times in my life, like, where I'll be out in the opening, whether I'm at the train station waiting to get home or anywhere where I'm at. Like, I'm um, not trying to say that I was embarrassed to lab or embarrassed to crump in the public. It just would be like, I don't be want people to be looking at me like, this nigga crazy, this nigga tripping out. You know how people do, like, when they don't understand crump and they ain't never seen it. So they see it in, like, public. Some people get afraid of it. You feel me? Like, they right, get scared. Right. So, like, we was, um, it was me and Miho. We was at this, like, um, chicken spot over there by his house, bro. But God, I, I think it's saying, I think it's called Dave's Chicken or some shit like that. Over there on Hollywood, like in North Hollywood. We in line, I'm in line with him and shit. And um bros is low key labbing, like, but his heart is bro, like we in line, we in line. And I'm in my head, like, yo, this nigga don't give a fuck about none of these people here, bro. Like, and they all looking at him like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck is this nigga doing? And he like, he going all in, bro, but it gave me um inspiration to understand, bro, like you gotta block people out. If this is something that you really trying to do and it's something that you really love, you can't be worried about what motherfuckers going to say about you. You feel me? Because this is your calling. This, this is your gift. They might not understand, but later on in life, when they find out the information about Crump, they probably will acknowledge it. You feel me? So I just wanted to put that out there, bro. And yo, nigga, I wanted to talk about some shit. Um, uh, like, I don't want to say... Um, one of some old battles, bro. Like, I got into, like, um, around the time when I was from Vice City. I went from Vice City at the age of 16. And, like, it took up, bro. Like, maybe so I was, like, 18, 19. And then I went to DFAM. So when I was in DFAM, um, I got my biggest battle, bro. My One of my biggest highlights when I was really, really coming up was at the, um, it was at the session. If y'all know, like, the biggest sessions back in the days, bro, was, like, the session, bro. Like, yep. it'll, it'll be at the old D spot. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, that session, um, I got the battle weapon. Like, that was, like, a big highlight for me, bro. Like, a big, big-ass highlight, bro. And, um, yo, that was, like, a big, biggest, I, how could I say, one of the most crazy experiences that I had, bro. I had all these people come to me after I got off the stage, like, yo, nigga, what the fuck? You was crazy, bro. So, I got to see that a lot of OGs gave me respect coming from nothing to something. So, and then also, niggas, niggas never really acknowledge my style and crump like you feel me it wasn't ever accepted until like later like niggas start being like oh okay now i get his shit because i was doing all style shit with my shit like i wasn't just like sticking to like i'm gonna follow the trend where everybody's doing or dancing like just like these these niggas i choose i chose to dance like myself like you feel me but i still mixed it up with other styles or other people that influenced me to want to be raw and shit um also, bro, it was these two little kids, bro. Um, Scooter and Miles, bro. They they was um signed under um, Chris Brown, bro. So these little kids, bro, like if you've seen um a couple of Chris Brown videos and shit, like they was always with him. Like um those two kids, um I used to teach them at Crenshaw High School before they got scouted out and signed with Chris Brown and stuff. I was close to their to their moms and shit, bro. So. Um, I was at um, taking um, some college credits and stuff at um, Crenshaw High School and stuff. And when I was up there, like after school, they had something in an auditorium. People was auditioning for the Black Eyed Peas and shit. So the oh, two wow. little kids, I two the two little kids, I happened to see them there. Their mom had brought them there to audition. So we was all on the stage getting off. Like and um, I got connected with the parents because they they seen how my crump was and they was like, yo. Like, you really good and everything like that. Is, is it a way you can, like, take time out, like, on Fridays and teach our kids and shit? So I was like, yeah, you know, got their numbers and stuff like that. We chopped it up. So every Friday that I start coming through, like, um, taking my night school credits before I had my class, I was teaching them at the school. So I think um, Tommy the Clown had a battle zone. He had a battle zone at Debbie Allen um, uh, Music Academy, like, out there in, um, in the west side. I think that's, like, in, like, I want to say – Culver City, the Culver City area. Like, um, when I came there and everything like that, it was packed out. Everybody was there. There was a lot of dancers there. But as soon as I came in, um, the two the two little kids, Scooter and Miles, they jumped on me. Like, Chris Brown was a right, right around across, the, like, the hall and shit. Like, shit was all funny, though. And I came in, and people were like, oh, this nigga show off. What's up, bro? That's
Yeah. Show me and shit. Like it was like funny because I got to see Chris Brown reaction though. Like you know this nigga like you know he made his way. He made his, you know, he made his way like like. Hold on. Yeah, you good, bro? Yeah. Cause I can hear myself right now talking. That's why I'm. I don't know. Yeah, a little I mean, echo, right? Yeah, I think somebody had called me right now. And I feel like somebody about to yeah, whenever someone call you, it'll like fizz out a little bit, but you good though, bro. All right, all right, all right, bad, bad. Yes. Yeah, I seen Chris Brown like uh, like across the hall, and then like I'm over here chilling. So um, when the kids on me, I'm like hugging them and shit, like what's good, niggas? Like how y'all been and shit. Chris Brown low key come over there and make his way over there, like like low key playing fight with them and shit, but grab them off of me and like turn back and look at me like nigga like. He's my dad. Like, I'm like, he don't, <laughs> I, he don't even know. Like, I've been teaching these niggas, bro. I'm not, I'm not trying to take your students, bro. But just, they got a lot of their thoughts off of me helping them, bro. Like, you know, on some humble shit. Hey, is it a way? Is it a way? Like, um, I can exit out and come back on because I can hear yeah. myself. All right, yeah. I'm gonna exit out and pop back on. All right, hold on. Yo, what's good, y'all? Got the homie show off on here. Heavy hitter and crump, man. He telling y'all some deep stories, man. Y'all, you know, stay tuned. Keep it locked. Share, let everybody know. Fuck wow, what's good, man? Salute, bro. We got to get you on the show one of these days. All right. All yeah, right. now you feel real good now, bro. All right, all right, yeah, because that's yeah, what yeah. it was like, you know, I could hear myself echoing out. But, yeah, I was saying, bro, like, when Chris Brown seen me and shit, and um, he took the kids, like, low-key off me, playing, fighting with them and shit. When he grabbed them, he low-key turned around and looked at me like, like, nigga, these is my students. Like, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm not, I was never intentionally trying to take your dancers or nothing like that. They just acknowledge and they know who I am, and they happy to see me and shit, you feel me? So mm -hmm. I was just like, I just thought that shit was funny and shit. I was just like, it's all good, like. It's all cool and shit, but that that's that definitely something that I wanted to like share with y'all. Far as just mm -hmm. like on some like celebrity status shit that I got the experience, like you know. Right. Another thing too, bro, I wanted to talk about like my first time really getting paid in crunk. Like um, was from Nipsey Hustle. Like um, Nipsey Hustle opened up one of his record stores on uh, over there on Slauson, and when he had opened up that store, I was 16 years old, and I was um dancing with vice city millionaires like you know traffic is like the main lead over the group and everything like that we had a couple captains and all that but um we came down there and stuff like that um when he had opened up the store then he offered like to pay us if we was um willing to dance dance like out in the opening mind you we got all these game makers out there and niggas like it's <laughs> blue rags everywhere you feel me so right. like not everybody that was there danced though like some of the some of the homies were scared you feel me i ain't gonna say names and shit like that but not everybody danced, so you feel me? But I was one of the ones, like, this shit is, like, this shit ain't nothing to me, my nigga. This is, like, every day. This shit, I, this shit I see every day, nigga. The OGs is chilling, nigga. Just if you move funny, you feel me? You go get pressed, right. you feel me? Yep. That's just how it is. If you just around these niggas and you just being yourself and you ain't trying to, like, do the most, nigga, you ain't going to get pressed, you feel me? Mm-hmm. So I, um, I did what I needed to do, and um, I danced. And after that, he pulled us to the side, and he she chipped us off. He gave us some money. They like, show off. You need a ride home? I'm like, hell no, nigga. What? This nigga <laughs> gave me $300, nigga. I'm going straight to the mall, nigga. I'm going to go buy some Jordans, nigga. I'm out of here, dead homies. Like, go straight to the mall, like, the, um, the Crenshaw Mall, nigga. Bought some J's and went to school, nigga. Like, damn, nigga, I got this because of this, nigga. So I just, like, um. I, I got like a, a lot of respect for that artist and everything like that. I didn't see him a lot of times within the city and stuff like that. And um, Hall of Fame and Hooligan Squad, we also threw a session dedicated to his death. Also, like when it, it did happen um, out there in Long Beach, um, we had through a big session and stuff. So that that was very successful too. And um, Morph Music, um, I paid him like um, some um, some good money to make a little like like a track and stuff that was dedicated to him also. So. Shout out to Morph Music. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, salute, salute. Shout, out, shout out to y'all. Yep, yep. So <laughs> that's just some like history shit that I got to experience. But another person that actually put me on too, bro, 
far as just like getting them um, gigs and shit is Hurricane, bro. Like, like that's he my me guy, bro. That's my guy, so. Yeah, Hurricane put me on on some shit, bro. Like, I was under him about like four years, so I can never like like I act like this is on some me shit. This ain't on on me shit. Like, bro, put me in and st he showed me a lot of shit, bro. This is why when he's dancing, I'm always next to him, giving him all my hype, bro. Like, just like respect. You feel me? Because he inspired me as like want to be crazy dope at crunk because i've seen mm -hmm. this nigga battle on everybody i seen this nigga battle grim swings and somebody else all up by the same time by one-on-one -on -one by himself bro i got this witness that shit like this nigga is legendary bro like definitely legendary somebody legendary in crunk he called me one time we was um we was on hollywood and highland and um pharrell was there he was signing autographs and shit like um for, for certain people that was coming in there buying his album and everything like that uh he was like yo bro like um it's a gig um on hollywood and highland um get dressed nigga uh, slide through um they gonna be paying us to dance and everything like that it was like 20 break dancers like a couple crumpers and a couple other like dancers bro we mopped through um hollywood highland jumping off of shit dancing when they had cameras on the back of the truck all this shit bro and um we got paid for that shit bro that was like my like another another time that I actually got to receive income off of my talent, you know. Right, so I'm right. like, yo, it, it feel good, bro. Like, cause this was my mm -hmm. big home, and on top of that, like I was young as fuck, bro. Like, I didn't think it was like possible to like make ends meet off of this shit. You feel me? So um, well, it was like a white lady, bro. Like she came upstairs, and she had a whop of money and shit. She put us to the side and she paid us all off. Every but every dancer that I uh, participated in it. They all got racked off, bro. So we was waiting for that actually, um, that video to come out. It never came out, but we heard the song. You feel me? We heard Pharrell's song and stuff playing and stuff. We was like, damn, nigga, like, where's the video at, though? But you know how that shit goes. Like, not trying to say he ran off with our shit, but, you know, it just never came out, bro. Shit never came out. But shit, we all got paid. I was just happy about, at least I got paid for what it was worth. You feel me? Yeah, back. Damn, yeah. bro. Yo, bro, you, I, I usually have all the questions lit, bro, but you already, yo, bro, you already on point with all this, bro. You the easiest <laughs> interview that I didn't, yo, bro, you the easiest interview that I done done so far, bro. You already got <laughs> shit on lock, bro. Yeah, bro, like, um, I think this is my, um, this is my second one so far. Um, I've been doing this shit, like, all day. Like, yesterday, um, I was doing a podcast yesterday with my nigga Corpse. Shout out to Corpse, like he, um, I believe he was Beast Camp. Uh, I think he's under, I think he under Beast, like Baby Eyes. Um, shout out to Corpse, like um, he did one with me, and then uh, my nigga Didi, my nigga Didi is from Texas, so I did one with him earlier today. So it was just like, I I got comfortable with like, all right, I got, I'll be talking, bro, because I make music, bro, so I'm always talking. Right, right, right. I just start jocking the shit down, like the important shit, like that I think that'll be like joke for people to hear, like you right. feel me, like. The Hitman era had to be known, bro, because, like, I think everybody probably was wearing a fucking, uh, what do you call it, the blazer and shit. Like, mm -hmm. when I think I started wearing a blazer, I was one Yo, of Yo, bro, kids. my little, bro, I would never forget to this day, bro, that when uh we seen this nigga Hitman wear them blazers, bro, my little homie went straight to the mall and copped this shit with the hoodie and everything, bro. Like, yo, bro, <laughs> to me, that's the best era ever in Crump, bro. I don't think, like, Bro, I don't think like no era in the future or recently can ever top that era, bro. To me, that's the best era ever in Crump, bro. Nigga, bro, that was so dope, bro. I was like, nigga, bro, anytime I see him get off with that, bro, nigga, I was at school with that shit, bro. <laughs> I was at school with that shit. <laughs> I had that shit. I had that shit, bro. I can never knock and say that um I was like one of those one of those guys that was on that trend, bro. That shit was tight to me. Shit was so super tight. Who, who, so far as since you've been dancing, you know, for so this long, like, do you have any fires like, like favorites besides like the people that you name, like Hurricane, you know, Hitman, Miho? You have any more favorites like the top five or you know somebody, some uh, dancers like you was like, man, that you always had to watch or was always in tune with? Uh, problem with y'all, bro. Yeah, he fired too, man. Fire. Yeah, problem with y'all, bro. I still haven't seen nobody with his chest pop, bro. He had the, he has the most craziest chest pop, bro. Like, 
the yeah, elite, craziest, bro. the craziest chest pop and what and it's because I stayed with bro like that was my big homie too at the time. I was junior problem child for a cool minute and I stayed with him about like maybe three years or two years or so. So bro, um he showed me the streets, you feel me? Like to understand how to maneuver, you feel me? So like that that will always be my brother, bro, always be my dog. You feel me? We don't talk as much, but right. you know, like still go show homage to my nigga, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Like um I think um um him and Knucklehead when him and Knucklehead battled, like I, I played a big part in that. You feel me? Why why that happened and everything like that. You remember the the era when niggas was like, uh, oh you worldly and all that shit. Mm -hmm. It's like <laughs> it was a lot of that shit was being being said like around this time. Like um I think it was like uh at the vote we had like a little like how do I say like you know when the sessions is over, everybody's outside gossiping yeah. and chopping it up yeah. and everything like, that, smoking oh, yeah. and shit. like we had a circle and uh knucklehood was asking everybody like who who they under and shit like like who you under he's like oh i'm under this person he's like show up nigga who you under i'm like i'm junior problem child he's like oh yeah like we we know you're not going to heaven like on some funny shit and i'm like wait i'm not going to heaven like, what do you mean bro like so so i got i got offended nigga like what you mean bro like like, what do you mean? It's like, yo, big homie problem child, bro. We already know how he be living. Like, you know, this was around that era. So I went back to problem child, like, yo, bro, like, and what's up with bro? Like, you know, he was saying this shit, like, you know, when I um, mentioned that I was under you. So problem child, like, man, I'm gonna get on with this nigga. You feel me? Like, what the fuck? Like, that, that shit out. So that, that's how that battle really started, bro. Like, you feel me? That shit escalated. Yeah. It escalated because I stayed with him and I went back and I tell him, like, this is my big homie. Let me inform him what was said, nigga. Like this was being being said and shit like that. So that shit ended up happening. They ended up battling and shit like that. So yeah, bro. Like <laughs> history shit. Uh, another nigga that was like my favorite, that was like super dope to me, bro. Is um that nigga YB. You know um uh, YB. Mhm. Mm you know um he's an OG, bro. Like way way back in the days, bro. Like people will have probably have to YouTube him. Like YB was dope, bro. Right? YB was super tight to me. Um. When it comes to buck hops, like buck hops is like my favorite in crunk. Like that's like my favorite shit. Like the jump, like mm -hmm. I, I really enjoy buck hops, nigga. Like um, I would say Boomer and Goofy had the craziest buck hops. If, yeah. if, if you were battling anybody that was a boomer, get ready. Like that, if they jump in the air, you're gonna know he a boomer. Like if if you got to see Goofy jump in person at an event. It's not gonna be a normal jump. It's gonna be legendary. Like, how the fuck is he in the air like that? You feel me? Like those those niggas inspired me coming up. Like, cause I I, I was like able to be next to these niggas. Like that's why it's so crazy. Like a lot of people mm -hmm. that's overseas, they see these niggas on YouTube, but they are they have to fly out here to, to try to meet them. And right, and right. Like, like like every every session that was during the week, I'm seeing them. You feel me? So. It was just a matter of time, I think, for myself to, to, to grow and be dope, bro. I just needed the right nigga to lead me right, you feel me? So shout out to all the niggas that, that used to be my big homie, too, though. I always got to show homage to those niggas. Like, my, I was saying my first big homie in Crunk was um, Crypto. Crypto mm -hmm. showed me um, um, a lot in Crunk, bro. Like, this far, just like, I want to say, like, I never really, ne never really knew about Crunk, but I knew about the clowning era. I just never really knew about crump. I was like in like ninth grade, pop locking and all that shit. I was doing touch and all that shit, mm -hmm. that little shit. And um, I went to a, I went to a school dance and shit. I think this was around when touch was out and uh, all that shit with Amarion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I went to a high school dance and shit. And that's how I'll be getting like you know my bitches and shit. You feel me? I I dance and do my shit, and then it'll be a big ass circle around me. Girls are just like flock up, bro. So I was like, damn nigga, I can get girls off of this dancing and shit, nigga. Like this shit crazy. So this one Friday at the school dance, um, I had a bunch of people surrounding me and shit when I was doing my shit, nigga, like out of nowhere, nigga, like usually my circle is always big. I got everybody around me watching me. Like they, the school knew about me. Nigga, everybody left my circle and they ran to this other circle and crypto was getting off. Like, and it was my first time seeing Crump at a school dance. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Like everybody was chasing him. It was like hell a lot of energy, bro. And he was a talk of the town, bro. So I was just like, yo, I gotta I gotta chop it up with bro and, and ask this nigga what what kind of dance is that? Cause I ain't never seen that shit. So he's like, right. You know about punk teens, nigga? Like I was getting bucked, nigga. 
I'm like, damn, nigga. Wait, chill, bro. Nigga, I'm just trying to figure out what the fuck is this. He's like, you don't know Crump King? You don't ride again. Let's be my praise, nigga. Like, I'm going to show you Crump Kings and all that shit, nigga. Dead homies. Like, so we got along cool because we both was Crips, too, bro. Like, so it all played a part. Like, you know, he showed mm -hmm. me Crump Kings. I went to his mom's house and seen all that shit that he had on his wall, like, like certain pictures and shit, like, like of all kind of dope crump events, nigga. And I was like, no, this nigga really love this shit. So he showed me show, solo, crush, rapture, all the OGs, all the vets. And then I fucking went crazy, bro. I went nuts, bro. I took this shit with me. I studied that shit every day, bro. After I went to go see the movie Rise, it was a rap. It was a fucking rap. Cause once I seen that movie, they had a battle zone. And uh, when they went, when we went to the battle zone, it was at the, I think it was at the forum, bro. That shit was crazy. It was a big ass stadium full of crumpers, bro. Yep. I want to say crumpers and clown dancers, bro. It, it was it both, was, bro. It was mixed. It was mixed. Yep. So you had a lot of people in there with face paint and you was from certain squads and shit. So mm -hmm. it was like random battles on the floor before the actual battles in the, in the ring. Cause it had a wrestling ring in the, um, yep. in the stadium, bro. That shit inspired me so fucking much, bro. That um, when I got my hurricane name, when I got my hurricane name, um, I start ditching school and I start battling other niggas in other schools. Like I was like, yo, I done battle everybody here in my school to prove that I'm the best here. Like I'm gonna start going to other colleges or high schools and shit, like and battling these niggas. Like like I'm really trying to get this shit popping. So that's how I met the Watchman. Like um, I went to Dorsey High School and I went up there and on a nutrition and lunch, ditching school and shit. Like. And the reason I was really wilding out like this too, bro, like a lot of niggas didn't know, like um, I used to get I used to get beat by my mom, bro. Like you feel me? So I around this time, like more I start growing facial hair on my face and shit. My mom, um, first love is my dad, bro. You feel me? So my mom ended up catching my dad in the house where like you feel me another woman in her house when she got off of work. So that mm -hmm. always triggered her. You feel me? So right. more I start growing and looking more just like my dad and my dad yep. was a dad too bro so a lot of the shit that i did was like affecting my mom when she seen me grow like you know what the fuck this nigga doing everything that his dad's doing but his dad never really been around his life like this shit it was eating her up bro like my dad is serving 25 to life in prison off of false charges behind the murder case i'm gonna tell y'all about that shit too bro but um with that being said like you feel me like i want to just want to say like my mom it would be like, I was just really into basketball and video games, bro. I didn't even know I knew how to crunk. I didn't even know I knew how to dance. You feel me? That shit came later in my life. Like, you feel me? Well, once I start getting beat, I start going around the dance community to get away from home, bro. You feel right. me? So, like, I, one day, my mom came in there. I was playing the PlayStation, and then I just started getting punched out, bro. You feel me? So, like, it ended up being, being crazy, bro. Like, way crazier than what I expected. So I came to school with my boombox. And um, I just started dancing on the third floor. I started laughing on the third floor. Nobody was really there, bro. Like, it'd just be me by myself. And um, I started, like, finding peace in that. You feel me? Because whenever mm -hmm. I did it, I feel relieved, bro. I feel like, you feel me? Like, damn, nigga, even though I still got to go back home to this bullshit, like, I was able to I let out a lot of steam. You feel me? And not hurt nobody. You feel me? Like, um, it, it happened one day. I um, came home one day, bro. Um, like, I'm, if everybody know me, bro. You probably always go see me with some kind of snacks in my hand, my nigga. Right. I be, I be, fucking, I be fucking up food, bro. So I come home, bro. It's like an early, like, I think we got out of school early on a Tuesday, bro. And um, I get in the house and shit, nigga. It's like a pack of Oreos on the table and shit. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck, nigga? Like. Yo, nigga, like, I, I'm calling my mom name, like, yo, like, mom, like, nobody answered. I call my sister name, my brother, nobody answered. So I'm like, ain't nobody home. It's a pack of Oreos on the table. Like, I'm like, I can check the fridge and shit. I check the fridge and we got milk. I'm like, on the dead homies, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna smash on this shit, for real. So I'm like, I'm probably gonna get like 10. I ain't gonna really gotta get too much. You feel me? Like, nigga, I end up smashing a whole pack of Oreos. Nigga, like, didn't even know. Like, you feel me? So mom's coming to the house and she looking for these Oreos. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm already knowing she's finna search for these motherfuckers. I'm trying to backpack and like, like backpedal in the back. Like, so she like, won't press me. Cause it's hard, like, it's hard to lie, nigga. You, you gonna see my face. And you gonna know, right, like, right. you feel me? So she like, you seen those Oreos and this and that? I'm just like, I don't know what you talking about. Like, so she started chasing me, trying to punch on me and shit. Like, but I'm laughing, like, 
you know, trying to block her and shit. And then it start it went to like to another level, bro. She like, like, you know, if I had you, I can take you out type shit. Like da 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 yada. And I'm like, yo, this shit getting too serious. Like, and so it's over the Oreos, mom, like, chill down. Like, you know, it's a circle table that's behind me, my nigga. It's glass. You feel me? It's a glass table. This table, like, you know, when she was punching on me, it started tilting. And the way I was falling, if I would have turned around and fell, I could have, like, like, hit my throat. You feel me? So my only Man. option was to push my mom off of me. And I wasn't trying to, like, how can I say push her, like, to hurt her? I'm just trying to get her off of me so I can catch my balance, my nigga. So when I did that shit, I pushed my mom, and she fell, and she hit her eye on the edge of the couch. So she got a black eye. So she screamed super loud, my nigga, like, dummy loud. When she got up, it was, like, another person, bro. It wasn't my mom no more, my nigga. Like, she started grabbing everything that was near her that was sharp, bro. Like, she grabbed a hot iron, threw that shit at me. I'm ducking from that. My little brother and my sister, they right there, they getting to see this shit. You feel me? So, like, she grabbed this picture frame. She threw it directly at my temple, bro. If, um, y'all probably wouldn't be able to see this shit unless, unless it was, like, hella detailed. But I got, like, a, I got show off tatted on my arm right here. And the S that's in my, um. Well, the H that's on my arm, it's a big ass gash in there. That's from when she threw the picture frame at me and I picked my hands up, the oh. glass got stuck, it got stuck in my arm. So I was bleeding, like a bunch of blood was guzzling down my arm. I got my little brother right there. He's like three years old. My sister right there. And like he even screaming, like, what you doing to my brother and shit, bro? She she smacked him and shit. And I was like, yo, this shit is sick, bro. Like I, I got I can't stay here with you. I gotta get the fuck out of here. Like I'm never coming back. Like, you talking about taking me out, and I'm your son. And on top of that, you know, I'm always babysitting to help you get your ends meet. You feel me? I'm, I don't really <laughs> got a life because majority of the time, I'm staying home, and I'm watching them. You feel me? On dead homies, I'm out of here because I'm never coming back. You feel me? So I branched off. She she moved me out the hood at an early age, so I wouldn't be like my uncles. I wouldn't be like the certain man in my family, bro. You feel me? A lot of the mm -hmm. men in my family, like, out of all of them, I'm the main one that made it and got a high school diploma, bro. You feel me? And I got a career and I got a job, bro. I don't got no felonies, bro. You feel me? A lot of the boys in my family, they didn't make it, bro. My my dad <laughs> dropped out of before high school, middle school. So it's just like when I look at my life, bro, and I look at like crunk, it played a big part of saving me, bro. Because if I didn't have that shit, imagine when I ran out the house, where I would I would have ran to? I would have ran to the hood. Mm -hmm. but I, 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 I ran to the homie house and I took my my my, my stereo to the um, third floor of nutrition at lunch and I started dancing over there. As I'm dancing upstairs and shit by myself, that day though, bro, I was punching on the lockers and shit. Everybody was looking and shit, like looking for me. My girlfriend was all scared of me and shit because she heard about it. Like, yo, this nigga show off, like tripping out. He was like punching lockers and shit in the hall because I was stressed out, bro. Like, like just imagine that shit, bro. I'm a good kid. I got, I used to get all A's, bro all A's, bro. I used to play the guitar, bro. Like, I was really talented, and for all that shit to happen to me, just because I looked like my father, bro, it was fucking me up mentally, because I still didn't understand why she was doing it. Like, my uncles had to break it down to me. They OGs from, from the set and watch. You feel me? So, when mm -hmm. they, they put me to the side, like, look, this is not you intentionally, like, um, how can I say, doing anything wrong. Like, you only get one mother, my nigga, but love your mom and forgive her for what she's doing to you, but understand your mom went through some shit with your dad. So you look just like your dad and she had flashbacks. So it's going to probably take time for her to heal and change, bro. But God can change anything. So just forgive her and understand the process. Like work with her through this process of changing, whether she hitting you or not. You a man, you could be able to take a punch. My nigga was just be there for your mom. This shit was hard to accept, but it made more sense to me why she was doing it. So when I was upstairs dancing, and with my stereo by myself, I stopped dancing, and it was a bunch of people up there, like, in the hallways watching me. And I didn't even know they was watching me. Like, I had the principal. All of them was up there clapping for me, bro. When I got done laughing, everybody was clapping. And I was so confused. Like, wait, y'all like this shit? Like, y'all was watching me the whole time? Like, they was like, you was good, bro. Like, how long you been doing this shit? I'm like, well, it's been, like, like not that long, though. Like, you know, I've been putting my, my all into this shit, though. Like, I really, I those labs, though, I was crying, bro. And I was by myself. Yeah. I, I was shit. Mm -hmm. I was letting out shit. You feel me? So like around that time, we used to um, call it like rep sessions. See, like I was repping by myself, bro. You feel me? Nobody was up there. So um, I was like, damn. Since people liked it, I start doing it like every day, like every like, like probably like on Fridays and shit. I get it cracking up there. Like 
more people come, more I'll dance. Like if it's not a lot of people, I wouldn't dance. So they start calling me show off. Like you a show off, bro. You a show off, bro. Like like you only dance when all the girls come or like a bunch of people come, nigga. Like you don't be like like dancing like when not a lot of people come. So it would be set battles and shit. Like I had a fam of like twelve niggas that would show offs at the school. So I had my whole little army there, nigga. Like in high school, like um, I heard um, a boomer was at the school, bro. And that shit was crazy. Like, um, they was like, um, yo, it's another dope nigga here saying he the best here at the school. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, who was this nigga? It was Jay Boomer. So um, um, me and him met up on the third floor, and we ended up battling each other for, like, you know, who the best and shit. So that day yeah. in my head, I was like, yo, what the fuck? This nigga jumped crazy. So I started I started following all the boomers. Like, the boomers is fucking crazy when it comes to buck hops, bro. Like, that nigga was jumping so high in the air. Like, that shit was a crazy battle, a crazy experience. But I just thank God that um, he brought Compton to my life and allowed me to use it to the way where I was able to forgive my mom and I actually got to see her change. You feel me? From being hella hood, still on her crib shit. So, like, she started changing the way she speaks, changing the way she, she approached me or my brother. It wouldn't be with the hands. It would be vocal. You feel me? Right. So, I got to change you feel me that's when i separated though like I, I ran away at 16 came back at 21 you feel me but after i finished high school the school called me back to um the, the teach after school programs i went to hamilton high school like it's a music academy school the same school that um amari i went to like um i used to see him a lot after school too so it was just like um bro be at the fucking dc session sometimes yeah bro. yeah oh, yeah i've been seeing that lately bro <laughs> over the years yeah, yeah. Bro. Yeah, bro, bro be in the mix, bro. He be in the mix, bro. So I, I seen him a couple of times. So he be, he actually got off one time too, bro. At mm -hmm. one of the DC sessions, he danced. So um, I just want to say, bro, like when I say crump, it does something to you where you can't really explain it, bro. Like, like you can go to counseling and get counseling, like therapy, but you can walk out that motherfucker and still feel like you did when you walked in there. You feel I me? Agree. When you buy the you can go to a session, you can get off, and you can lead a session, and you will feel goofy as fuck, like, or just happy, like, hey, nigga, I can't wait to the next one, nigga. Or you be calling your boys, like, nigga, that shit was hard, nigga. Y'all be talking about yeah. battle that happened and this and that, or all the fuck shit that went down that night, you feel me? That's why I come around front, just to be around the energy, to be around the vibes, to see my dogs, to see people that, you feel me, that influence me to get rid of the thoughts that I'm going through when I'm alone. Because when you go, when you mm -hmm. by yourself, I feel like, that's when your that's when your struggles try to pull you down when you by yourself. So as time as time that went by, bro, I done learned how to like I learned that we have a we have a choice to accept, bro. Like whether we wanna be happy, whether we wanna be mad, whether we wanna be depressed, whether we wanna, whether we wanna just be like, you know what, I'ma claim victory over this day. So I started telling myself like I don't have to be sad today. I don't have to be depressed at all, my nigga. I could just look at like these are things that I got to accept in my life. It happened. It happened. I accept it. Now, let's keep this shit pushing, nigga. Because God made man strong. And I got to be strong. You feel me? So I got other people that's also looking at me too, bro. So I've been pushing myself, like elevating in life. And it's, everything been going good, bro. But I wanted to say, nigga, <laughs> the niggas that's been, that I've been under, bro, like my old big homies. Like, so I said crypto was one. After crypto, I was under shakes. I was under shakes. I was a buck star. So I was under right. shakes for a Cool minute, niggas is like, yo, um, this nigga show off style is dope. Bro, he, 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 uh, Shakes had ended up being what Jay Rascal for uh, for a minute, right? Yeah, yeah, but this was way, way before that. This, this oh, way, okay. before that. this is like when AIM was out and shit. Like, like everybody was on the best AIM. era too, bro. <laughs> AIM is the best era, bro. <laughs> facts, facts, bro, facts. On the day, homies, like that era was crazy. I remember, I remember, I was um. After I finished high school and the school called me back to teach them um, classes and shit, they was like, yo, we offering to pay you $12 an hour to teach after school. So that was my first job. I was teaching crump. Like my first job ever, nigga, I was teaching crump after school. And the school was paying me. So I was like set, bro. My mom called me one day. I'm chilling with my shorty and shit. We like downtown Long Beach and shit. Like uh, she got a, like a, a dope little pad and shit. Like her, her roommates was like two girls from Mexico, bro. But I know that people was probably from the cartel, bro. They had the, they had, one shorty had the Hummer, the other one had the Porsche. So, like, you know, I had the key to the crib, though. You feel me? So, 
you remember, mind you, I'm over there chilling with my girl posted, and my mom's calling. She's like, um, yo, you coming home today, or what, what's the what's the deal? I'm like, nah, mom's, I'm, I'm not gonna be coming home today. I'm probably gonna stay the night with my girl and shit. I probably come home the next day. She's like, all right, when you come home, pack your bags and shit. We gonna be moving to Vegas. So I'm like, what the fuck? Like, she should have gave me a heads up and let me know something. Cause like now my girl all crying and shit and I gotta break shit down. Like, you feel me? Like I'm gonna be back type of shit. You know how that is. Like not long distance shit be rough, bro. So I ended bro. up taking the transition to like I I'm not gonna like leave my mom hanging, nigga. Like if you finna move to Vegas to cause she can't really afford rent and Cali is cheaper in Vegas. I'm not gonna leave you hanging by yourself, my nigga. I'm gonna I'm a ride I'm gonna ride with you. So I took the opportunity and let the job go I had. Shit, bro, the relationship I had, I had to let it go. She didn't want to do the long distance relationship, so I bounced to Vegas and I knew about Crush. I was like, Crush is out here. The Crush run is here, nigga. I got to figure out how can I link with these niggas and session with these niggas. So around this time, bro, like, like nobody really knew who Show Off was. Like, I, like, like people knew me, but I was gone for a, a long ass time. So my name kind of faded away. Like, you feel me? So, but it was only because I was trying to help my mom get on her feet. You feel me? Like, I had to babysit every day while she was trying to work. And it was crazy, bro. She was doing some wild-ass shit. She was trying to work. She was a RN for UCLA College. So she was trying to, um, she was trying to work, like, how can I say, like, at UCLA College still and stay in Vegas. So I'm telling my mom, like, why you didn't transfer your job? I think it'll be more wiser if you transfer your job to fucking, like, Vegas because you got to drive four, like, five hours to get to UCLA and then five hours back to get home to us, you go end up crashing. You go get sleep. You go get sleepy. Like you feel me? I don't think you should do that shit. And that shit ain't smart. It's dangerous. Mom's like, you know, she's just more so like, you know, don't be telling me what to do. This and that. Yada yada. I know what I'm doing. Like, and I'm like, damn, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, cause like, I'm just trying to tell you what's the wise thing to do. You feel me? Like, mm -hmm. your health is everything. Like, where you go sleep after you get off of work? She just kept mentioning like her sister house, and I'm like, nigga, even like my auntie, whatever, like. She stay in Palmdale. That's still another hour drive. You feel me? Like at least an hour, bro. You feel me? Like mom's just doing some wild shit, bro. So I didn't really have a life, bro. All like every day I was babysitting. Like I wake up and take my my brother and sister to fucking school and shit. I walk them to school and come back, and I'm in the house laughing every day, laughing, laughing, laughing. And then I, I'll go to the library and get on AIM to try to figure out where, where the Crumpers is at. Like, where, where where this nigga Crush Sessions be at. But you got to be, you have to be popping for niggas to actually respond to you or right? get at That's you. Not, right. if niggas would not get at you if they didn't know you. You feel me? Right. And they had like a little, little, little Crumpers page where you can, like, trade tracks and shit. Like, all that shit. Niggas would not once, respond yo, bro, to you. Once I, once I moved from Cali to New York, bro, that's how I was getting all the tracks, bro, was because all the everybody that I still knew from Cal, you know what I'm saying, I was able to get them from off the aim, and then that's how I was, like, spreading the movement far as, like, Rochester, Buffalo, because, um, bro, I pretty much went through the same shit with you, like you did, bro. You know, I uh, I was in Cali, Lancaster. I ended up, my uncle died. I ended up having to move to New York with my mom. You know what I'm saying, then? I still knew everybody, bro. So like, like, like Rochester, New York is like, no, not known for nothing, bro. So like you said, bro, nigga, I'm dancing and like, in my mom driveway, everybody pulling up, like, yo, what the fuck is you doing? I'm like, yo, what y'all niggas do here? You know, cause you know that's all we do uh, back home is, you know, crump. So you know that's all I knew coming here, bro. And like, yo, I'm going to the clubs, like fucking. Getting off and shit, everybody's like, this nigga weird, bro. Like when I um at the time I had my lip pierced, you know how the style is in Cali, bro. So my hair at the time I had braids, my shit was half red, half like how yours is. My shit was like everybody was like, yo. And then at the time niggas wasn't wearing vans and all that shit here. So they was like, man, what the fuck this nigga? Like they was like, is this nigga gay or something, bro? Now everybody like the shit is normal. That's hey, where I'm saying, bro. Bro, I had to go do that same shit. Like, cause mind you, nigga, I'm from PJ Watts Crip. So when I came to my hood, when I'm in skinnies, they not have mm -hmm. it. What you doing? Damn, homie, man, go take that shit off. Cause like, like they don't play that shit. Like my big homies, my 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 family, bro. I couldn't come, I couldn't come a certain way. Like this is me. Like you feel me now? When I'm going over there, they wearing that shit. Like, like right. they wear all that right. shit. Yep, yep. same like, shit, bro. Religion, all that we was, I was on that shit, bro. But it yep. just like certain styles wasn't accepted by certain people. 
You feel me? So it was just like, I know what you mean, bro. Like, it took a minute yeah, for them bro, to be like. It was crazy here, bro. Like, this <laughs> dancing, bro. I ended up uh, linking up with some cats, you know, here as far as my crew. Like I said, I don't dance no more, but, you know, everybody, they still dance far as in my crew. But, you know, they was like, man, this nigga. And at the time, when I moved here, that's when the fucking Crump King, I had every Crump King DVD, bro. I had everything. So, like, them niggas was like, oh, this nigga really, uh, like, is, like, he really, really into this shit. So, you know, we live and training and everything. Like, I ended up, uh, it's a, uh, city, I don't know if you ever heard of, a Buffalo, New York. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've been to Buffalo, New York once, bro. I yeah, so, <laughs> yep, yep, so, bro, I ended up meeting, like, uh, Spartan, Judge, and all them. And at the time, like I said, bro, I was the only nigga that had, like, everything everybody in Cali was dancing with, like, all the tracks. I had them, bro, because, you know, like, I know Hurricane and all them niggas, bro. So, like, bro, I was getting it. I had all the shit, bro. So, that's how I ended up, like, linking up with them. And niggas was up, like, far as New York was like, oh, this nigga really know everybody. So, you know what I'm saying? That's how I pretty much, you know, uh, carry my shit on and fires with my crew, bro. But. Man, we, like, bro, just hearing your stories, bro, like, everybody, bro, going through or went through that same thing, man. And this is hella dope, bro, that, you know, you being a man just coming on, even explaining your story, bro, because this shit going to touch a lot of people, bro. Because a lot of people are scared to even share their stories or a lot of niggas just hold shit in or they be like, oh, that ain't the cool thing to, um, you know, share, like, deep shit, bro. So definitely salute to you, bro, man. I'm just glad, bro. Like, that's God, bro, like even you being prepared to like even share this shit like i got so much like questions written down bro but you already like knocking them out so i don't even gotta say shit bro so oh yeah that's fire man real shit bro yeah man um, i wanted to finish telling you that testimony though bro when i was standing yeah, go out ahead there in keep vegas, going keep going bro keep going when i was when i was standing out there in vegas bro like um and i told you my mom's situation she wasn't trying to transfer her job to Vegas, she was still trying to like work like that. And she really started doing that shit, bro. So my mom wasn't really in our life like that no more. Like she was like literally working to make sure we had food in the fridge, we had the bills paid. So she'd be gone, like working. So um, this time, like um, I was at the bus stop just chilling, bro. Just like chilling, like laughing. Like I was on my way to head back home. So like before my mom left off, so I'm laughing and shit. And this one nigga is like, I don't know. I forgot who the fuck he was, but he was like, oh, hey, bro, like you crump? This and that, like, you know, this nigga crushing um, this and that, yada, yada. I'm like, um, yeah, I heard about him and everything. They's like, yeah, bro, like, well, shit, um, I don't know where they sessions be at, but I be opening up my my garage and shit on Fridays, bro. You can come through and, like, fuck with us, bro, if you down a session. I'm like, hell yeah, nigga, I don't really got no life here, nigga, like. I'm, like, not that far from the strip, but, nigga, I, I don't know nobody in Vegas. Like, no, I knew nobody, nigga, not one dancer, nigga. So, um, I'm, like, let me let my mom know and everything like that, like, that I met some homies and shit, and I'm trying to go over there and fuck with them on Friday. She, like, yeah, you can go, but just make sure you be back home at this certain time before I leave off to go to work. You feel me? You know, I'm driving out. I need you to make sure you're there to babysit your brother and sister. I'm, like, mm -hmm. stop. All right, say no more. So, as soon as I do that, and gonna link with these niggas the bus that I was supposed to kick to get back home. That shit came early, bro. So I'm trying to chase that shit, bro. That shit get on. I'm like, damn, nigga. I know my mom, bro. She about to be pressed, bro. Cause I know my sister will snitch. You feel me? Like, you know, he ain't here and this and that. So I get there and it's exactly what I said. My sister, like, you know, mom's mad at you and everything like that. She she said, uh, you were supposed to be here to watch this and this. I'm like, man, this shit crazy, cuz cause when I was your age, I was changing your diapers. Like, you feel me? Like. This is wild. Like, I don't see why, like, you know, why you can't watch them a little bit. Like, but it's it's all good. Like, when I get my shit together, like, and I wasn't saying this is, like, the son of my own family, nigga. I was just speaking facts. Like, I was just like, yeah, know, when I, I bro, when shit, I, bro. I was like, when I get my shit together, like, I'm, when I when I get a job and I get, a, um, get in college and, like, get my own car and all that shit, like, I'm going to get my own spot one day. Like, and not even to say it like that, but y'all not going to be my responsibility. Like, I love y'all, but at the same time, I got a life, too. And it's like, I'm not even, I don't even have a life because I'm giving y'all my time. You feel me? Like, to try to help moms get up. But this shit is crazy. Like, she getting mad at me over shit like this and, and, and not understanding my situation. Like, I was trying to get back. You feel me? I ever set the time that, like, the alarm and make sure I got back on time. But that shit just happened to come early. So, um, I went to the library and tried to get on AIM again to see where niggas is at. Nobody responded. None of that shit. 
So my sister called my mom and she told my mom everything I said. So that shit backfired, bro. My mom like heard everything that I said because my sister told her. So my mom turned around and, and called off of work, bro. She came back, bro. And this was my mom. She wasn't yet saved yet. She still was banging, bro. So even though she was a nurse, she still was with the shit. So right. she came back in the library and she's like, you talking shit behind my back to my fucking kids, nigga. Yada, yada, yada. Like, yeah, your ass got to have somewhere else to stay. The librarian, like, she like, fuck that. She she grabbed the keychain that was on my neck and just ripped it off. Mind you, it can't rip off, you know? So she really put some strength in that motherfucker and ripped it off. So I had a big-ass red scar on my neck. Everybody in the library was all laughing at me and shit, like other little kids and shit. They thought that shit was hilarious and shit. Like, they were dying laughing. Like, so I got embarrassed, nigga. Like, I'm, like, leaving out and shit, like, to go back home and shit. So as I'm going back home, like, um... I'm like, damn, I can't go to the crib. If I go to the crib, she gonna want to fight. You feel me? I know my mom's attitude. I got to give her some days to calm down because if I walk in there right now, she gonna try to get out with me. So um, my auntie stayed in the same complex. And I was like, if I talk to my auntie and shit, I'm pretty sure she'll let me crash over for a couple of days and shit like that. So when I sag back over there, like, and um, like, it'll be like mellow. Like I apologize to my mom for nothing. I didn't do shit wrong, my nigga. But I just want to keep ends meet cool with us. You feel me? So I'm just gonna apologize anyways and let her know like I ain't trying to I ain't trying to beef, nigga. I'm just trying to be at home, nigga. Like have a roof over my head, cause like that's about it. So I told my auntie and she's like, yeah, you can stay over here for like three days and shit until she she calmed down and shit. So um, the third day when I went over there to check and if um, you know she's solid and I apologize and shit, I knock on the door. She don't answer. So I'm like, you know, it's early in the morning. Like you know, like. She not answering her door, nigga. So I look in the um, liver on and shit. I'm like, what the fuck? That shit low-key weird. Like, ain't no furniture in the house. Ain't nothing in there. I'm like, what the fuck? I ain't really tripping, though, bro. Like, I'm just like, what the fuck? They cleaning out the house or some shit? Like, what they doing? So I go around and look in my room. Mind you, like, all crumpers know we're crazy over our shoes. We're crazy over our shoes, nigga. When I didn't see my shoes in the house, nigga, that's when I tripped. I was like, nigga, where the fuck is my SBs at? Like, all my shit gone, nigga. Like, all my kicks is gone. Like, all my shit in my room gone. So I go back to my auntie's house, and I'm like, I got this look on my face. My auntie, like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, man, my mom moved out on me. Damn, homie. Like, she gone. Like, she moved out overnight. She like, she moved out on you. I'm like, man, go over there and check out the house. That whole shit empty, my nigga. Ain't shit over there. Ain't shit in the house. It's empty. So my auntie go over there, and she checking out the crib and shit, and she found, like, a U-Haul sticker with my mom's name on it like near the trash can. So my mom plot, planned, she plotted to move out. Like, you know, like she moved out on me, got ghosts and tell me where she went, took all my shit. And mind you, all the shit that I bought, I bought it myself, my nigga, because I didn't like when my mom was buying me shit, she would take it from me. You feel me? Like if we get it, yep. if we get into an argument, she'd be like, oh, you want to be smart? Well, I bought that shit. Give me that shit, nigga. This and that. So I didn't like that shit, bro. Like from now on, like I'm buying all my shit. So when she, she gave me that attitude, you can't take this. I bought this with my own bread. You feel me? So when I that's when I said I was tripping when I seen all my shoes and everything going because I bought all that shit myself. So she hey, man. taking my yeah. shit, my nigga. So um, my auntie was like, "Damn, I'm sorry that that happened." Like you feel me? I don't know where she went. She didn't tell none of us nothing. Like you know, like you didn't hear nothing. I'm, I'm like, man, if I heard something, I would let you know, nigga. Like I don't know what's going on. So my auntie like, I will let you stay here and everything like this with me. Like, um, but, you know, I don't got it like that. Like, if you stay here with me and shit like that, they, if they find out you staying here, I'm going to get evicted. They go kick me out. They go raise the rent on me. So, like, I don't even got it like that even for you to stay more than a couple of days because I only got enough food for me and mine. So, you feel me? Right, Her and right. her daughter. I was like, I respect the auntie. Like, you feel me? You helped me out enough. It's like, it's all good and shit. She's like, um, the best way I think you should do is try to get come up with money to, um, and get a U-Haul ticket ticket to get back to Cali on the west side. Like, cause like, you know, everybody, all the family out there in the hood, like, you know, like they'll have your back and shit. Like if you go out that way and I'm like, my mom kept me away from the hood for a reason, nigga. If I go and stay in there, that shit go change, change me into a monster. You feel me? All right. Like I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be around the family that much. You feel me? Like I already knew I had a calling in my music. I had a calling in my dancing, but I didn't think I was going to elevate and be what I am today in both. You feel me? It's just like, Around this time too, bro, I didn't really, I didn't really believe in God, bro. Like, not trying to say like, like I didn't, I didn't believe in God like that way. I just never experienced anything to believe in Him. You feel me? But my mom used to always um invite me to church and stuff like all the time, bro. Like, 
And like, I'll, I'll be hot though, like, cause sometimes it'd be like shit cracking on the weekends. Like they got a mansion party and shit, like with all the seniors and shit. I'm trying to be around all the hoes, all the bitches. You feel me? Like that's that was me. You feel me? Like I was popular and I was trying to like be around the functions and shit. Like mom's trying to get me to go to church in the morning. And I'm like, if this time, the time you got to go to church is the time when this shit start. Like mom, I ain't, I ain't trying to do that shit. She dragged me to go anyways. You feel me? And then she start hearing that. I was by myself one time, just like just saying this shit by myself, like poetry. Cause before I started rapping, I was doing poetry. My mom came in on me one time and I didn't know she was right there listening. So she heard me doing poetry. She like, that was your shit? I'm like, yeah. She like, all right, well you need to start doing this shit every Sunday for the church. So she started yeah. making me do this. <laughs> she started making me do poetry for the church. And it was cool, bro. Cause I enjoyed seeing her happy and bragging about me and shit. Like, yeah, that's my son and this and that. I got a couple of awards and shit uh, from doing that shit for moms and shit, but I still just never got it. Like when people was in church catching the Holy Ghost falling out and all that shit, I just never feel what they was feeling. And I just never understand like, like how is this shit real to y'all? Like this shit fake to me. Like I don't, I don't feel God presence. I don't know, nigga. It's just, I don't know. It just was weird to me. So um, when this happened and um, I was out in the world, now I'm in a situation where I got none of my clothes. I don't got my family. I just got myself, bro. And I got to figure out how to come up with, with money to get back to the other side to survive. And mind you, Vegas, when it get cold at night, nigga, it's a different type of cold, bro. It's a desert. You feel me? It ain't like I can catch the metro train and go to the next stop, like the west side. You feel me? You got bus that's coming every like 30 minutes, 15 minutes. Like Vegas, the bus is coming every two hours. You feel me? So I don't got no money. They not going to let me get on. So I'm just thinking to my head, like, bro, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do, bro. You feel me? So I went to this park. I um, went to this park by myself. I sat on a bench and I was like, you know, it was getting darker and darker. And I was just like, I don't know what I'm going to do, nigga. This shit getting crazy. And I got to figure out something soon. Um, I started praying. I prayed my first time. I didn't even know how to pray. Like, you feel me? But I closed my eyes and I actually, like, believed that I was talking to somebody that was actually going to really help me manifest to the part in life that I need to be in, in the right direction, the right path. As soon as I prayed and I finished praying, all these ideas just clicked in my head, bro. And that shit came to me like, yo, bro, you got a um, you got a new Xbox, bro. You could pawn shop that shit. You got a Blackberry phone. Like, bro, that's gonna hurt though that you gotta get his phone away, but you might have to get that shit away, bro, to get back. So I was like, I could pawn shop all this shit. And then I got a, um, a EBD, EB, EBT card. So I was like, I can go to the grocery store and try to like ask somebody like, I can buy the grocery for them like extra groceries for you if you can um exchange it for real cash yep. and so that shit that shit hurt it so much my nigga they're homies because like i know who i am i'm show off at the end of the day i'll never be in the streets on some bummy shit like that you feel me that's not me but i was like forced in that situation that i had to do that shit you feel me i got the money from the pawn shop and that was bird seeds you know they're not gonna give you what the shit is worth at the pawn shop they're gonna give you less value or whatever you you giving them so i get to the store I'm asking everybody, like, you know, I'm trying to, like, exchange this for real cash. No, no. Everybody's saying no, no, no. It's to the point, like, I'm like, damn, this shit fucked up. If they knew my situation, why I'm trying to do this shit, like, it really will help me if I get this money. This one white guy was like, oh, really? Like, are right, you going to buy me extra groceries if I give you extra money? Like, like, like cash. I was like, yeah. He's like, all right, swipe your car first. I'm like, damn, homie. He said, swipe the car, bro. He gave me $100, bro. I'm looking at my money like, bro, I got enough to get back. It's just crazy, bro. Like, and and I feel like none of that would have happened if I would have prayed about it. I prayed about everything I prayed about it came to me. It came to me, bro. Like, so um, I went back to my auntie house to tell her like, yo, I got the money to get back home. I get back on the west side and shit like that. And she's like, um, I'm sorry that this happened, everything like that. But I got some good news for you though. Like your other auntie, her name is Terry Nosh. She's like, um, she stay in Vegas right now. She's like, um, yo, she's out here and she's looking for spots like um, like the apartments and shit, one bedroom apartments. And my my auntie Terry Nash, like a lot of niggas don't know this, um, her son, he's like um, the world national champion in scooters. Like, you know, in BMX, like when them niggas mm -hmm. be flipping the bikes and shit. Yeah. Like um, he's, he's into that shit, but with scooters. He know how to do all that shit with the scooter. So out there in Vegas, he popping out there, my little cousin. So um, I'm, I'm going to share some of his clips, too, soon, like, so people can really see this nigga. Like, he's amazing, bro. But anyways, um, 
she was like, she's out here. Maybe you can ask her that you can get a ride, like, going back. Because she's just coming to look at this spot, and she's driving back to Cali. So I'm like, damn, nigga, that should have helped. If I can get a ride back with her instead of buying this Greyhound ticket, that'll keep me money in my pocket for the rest of that week. And then I'll also get back. You feel me? So mm -hmm. she came through, scooped me up, bro. We freestyling raps and shit in the car, smoking a blunt. Whole time getting there and shit. Shit was, like, cool, bro. But I just knew in my head when I got out, like, you know how people be saying, like, if you ever need me, I got you. If, like, you know, anything ever happened to you, like, you know, like, you, you can you could count or you could depend on me, this and that. That shit out. Shit out, bro. Not everybody is facts about that shit, bro. You yeah, that's, that's like, true, bro. And you know what's crazy, bro? It be, like, the mainly, like, it be your family mainly, bro, that would be feeding you them lines, bro, and they be the first nigga to dip on niggas when shit get real, bro. Trust me, bro, I done yeah. went through all that shit, bro. Nigga, that shit, the first person I went to, cuz, the first person I went to was my, it was my auntie, my nigga, this is my dad, this is my dad's sister. And um, she told me, she told me this, she said, if you ever need a place to crash your head at, like, on everything I love, like, you welcome over here, like, you know, you don't ever gotta be out here in the streets. I, I took that shit to heed, like, I'm going straight to my auntie house, cuz, like, soon, as soon as I get over there and shit, like, um, I go to the door and shit, it was raining. My first night in Cali by myself, out. It was raining. So I'm like, I don't got no coat, nigga. I'm drenched. I'm walking, there's bubbles coming out of my shoes. Dead homies. Them the only shoes I got. That's the only outfit I got. So uh, I'm like, I come to the door, knock on the door, like, yo, auntie, like, she see me drenched, bro. I'm I'm soaked. I'm like, yo, auntie, like, um, uh, is it a way, like, and I remember you telling me, like, if I'm ever going through shit, like, I'm welcome to come here and shit and everything like that. Like, I well, this is one of these situations where I'm going through shit. Like, you feel me? Like, mom's moving out on me. She was just like, um, well, let me ask my husband real quick. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what you mean, ask your husband? Like, you know, I'm out here, nigga. Like, and you know my situation. My dad got 25 to life. Mom's like, you know, still going through this crazy shit. And it's like, and you, you funny, like, ask your husband, nigga? Like, I've been here before this nigga. You feel me? So she go back and ask him. She like, he said no. So she just closed the door in my face, nigga. I turn bro. around, I'm like, I'm back in the set, bro. Like, I'm in the hood. I'm in Watts. You feel me? So you got Compton, you got Watts right there, bro. Like, we right mm -hmm. there in Borderline, nigga. Yep. Like, um, um, that was my first time experiencing some real shit. I was walking downtown LA by myself, um, just mobbing, bro. Like, I'm just, like, I, I ain't really, like, too much watching my surroundings. I'm just mobbing, nigga, like, trying to figure out, like, how what I'm going to do to burn time, where I'm going to shower at, how can I, um like, spend a night at one of the homies' house or some shit. Like, like I'm mobbing. This one nigga just walk up to me next to me and he got a big ass blade at my stomach. So it was like, that was my first experience in actually retaliating, like on some like, knowing that nigga, I'm really with the smoke. Like if my life is at stake, nigga, I, I over fuck this nigga up, bro. Like I didn't fought all my life, but seeing, seeing myself react that type of way was crazy, nigga. Like I beat the dog shit out this nigga, bro. So um, I had the 818, you feel me? The 818 was my blessing. Like, nobody knew when I was going to the 818s. After the 818 was over, I was, like, either going behind the skate park trying to figure out, like, like where I'm going to go. Or, like, I'm probably going to need a couple Zs and shit. Like, I got to sleep on a bench or figure out where I'm sleep at, bro. I'm sleeping on the train some days. They had a 24-hour sub subway downtown LA. And I, I decided to do this, bro. I knew if I went to my hood, I knew if I went, to my, went back to my hood, they go give me a strap. They go tell me the plots. They go show me your waves. They get down. We go be doing all kind of crazy shit. And that's why I didn't choose that life. I was like, I can't go back to the hood. If I go back to the hood, it's going to change me. This is why my mom moved me out of the hood at an early age. So I won't be like this. So I was trying to avoid that shit, bro. But it got tiring. Like, you know, like me sleeping outside and shit, trying to figure out, you know, like how I'm a shower and all this shit, like spending the night at the homie's house. Yeah, they moms only let me stay the night like two nights, nigga. After that, it's a wrap. They like, and hey, he gotta go. He got, to, he got to get the fuck out of here. He can't live with us. You, you know how, you know how black bro. girls is, bro. Yo, you know bro. Like, you know, bro, how black all this shit. That, yo, bro. No lie, bro. All this shit that you saying right now, bro. I swear to God, bro. I went through the exact same shit, bro. Word for word, bro. Like when you said that shit about your auntie, the same shit happened to me, bro. And like you, you like I, I ended up uh at the time, you know, it was my uh daughter's mom. I didn't know, you know, obviously she was we was gonna have kids uh kid together, but 
bro, I like I was trying to fucking I was sleeping in my car, bro. Like, yo, bro, this like crazy shit, bro. Like, damn, man, is this this shit hearing your shit, bro, story, bro. I went through the exact same shit, bro. As soon as for me leaving Cali and I'm coming to here, I just I just experienced that fire is here instead of back home, bro. But this shit is crazy. Yo, bro, a lot of people don't know how like how that situation plays on your mind mentally, bro. Even though like Man. for one day you could be good, bro, but that shit just weighs down, bro, until that shit start crushing, bro. Then all of a sudden, bro, like you just panicking, trying to make moves, bro, trying to find a place to stay, bro. My nigga uh, worked, in, yo, bro, I was sleeping in my car, bro. Like I went to my aunt house, same shit. Her husband, every time like my um, aunt side of the family uh, pull up or come over, he'd be on some funny shit, bro. So nigga, like you really couldn't stay over there. Like still to this day, bro, that uh, that fucked up my relationship, like with some of my family members, cause you know what I'm saying? Like them shut shunning niggas, they knowing you in a fucked up spot, bro, and you thinking they family, bro, and you think you could turn in them, but them the first niggas that's gonna be like, yo, hell nah, or nah, or well, my husband said this, or uh, my wife said this, bro. So I know exactly, bro, what you're saying, bro. Damn, man, but yeah, bro. Keep, you, ever, you ever heard of the saying like, your friends are more family than your family is? That's how it is with me now, bro. Yeah, I don't got no family, bro. All, everybody in my crew, bro, everybody in my dance crew, bro, is my family, bro, and all they family is my family. You know what I'm saying? Like, with my dance crew, bro, those was the only places that, like, I could go to their house and spend the night. Because they was like, yo, you know, because in the city I live in is like kind of like it's not L like L.A., but it's like a smaller version where niggas getting killed every day, smoked every day, bro. So they like, yo, by you coming here and sh showing these niggas this crump dance, it's keeping everybody out of trouble. It's keeping these niggas still going to school. So they was like, yo, if you need a place to stay, you know, you could just stay here. And so I ended up getting my own crib, bro, and a job and shit like that, bro. But, yo, man, like a lot of people don't know, like everybody go through the same experiences, bro. Real shit, bro. Yeah, like that. That saying when I say like your friends are more fam family than your family is, that shit played a big part in me. Like, remember I told you like I, I was getting tired of like sleeping outside and trying to figure out my way to get around, bro. Mind you, I had like I had got this big backpack. Like one of the homies gave me a backpack that like 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 and gave me a couple clothes and shit. Like so, some of the homies that I was spending the night at their house after the eight one eight sessions, they was giving me clothes, bro. Because like some bro. of them kind of. Yeah, some of them kind of knew my situations. So when I went back, um, like, I want to say, like, I just got tired of uh, just being out there. I decided to go back to the hood, bro. Like, man, this shit too, too much for me to try to do it by myself, bro. I'm going I'm to need some extra help, bro, like with my family, bro. So I tried it out, bro. I went back to the hood, bro. When I went back to the hood, bro, I knew it was going to change me. I knew they was going to put me on certain shit. And um, it was just like, how can I say, like, this shit, this shit impacted me a uh, very, very lot, bro, because I thought my family, like, when you say family, like, niggas got you, bro. Like, niggas got your back. Like, you feel me? If you down, niggas go be there for you. That's 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 the way I say When I call you my bro, my my brother, my, my dog, my, you feel me, my A1, you feel me? I'm actually, I'm going to abide by that word. Like, you feel me? I'm going to treat you as what I'm saying. You feel me? All right. So I came in the hood. I came in the hood. My cousin was like, he was like, you got some money on you, cuz? I was like, man, man, you already know my situation. Dear homies, I'm broke. He's like, nigga, say no more. Like, this you right here, my nigga. Like, go get a haircut, shit. Go get, go cut your shit up. Get your shit cleaned up, my nigga. Like, um, I some clothes at the crib. Like, it's like some Adidas and some some other, like, trues and some other shit. Like, a little, whole little outfit, a little polo shirt, all that. That's yours, my nigga. Dear homies on the hood. That's yours. Like, I'm like, yeah, like, that's my shit. He like, yes, I'm happy as fuck. Nigga gave me a brand new outfit and shit, some new shoes and shit. So I get a haircut. I throw on the outfit and shit. I come in the hood. Like, he he got, like, like maybe, like, three little hood rats, like, chopping it up with him in the hood. It's crazy, too, because I was telling the homies, like, I'm um I'm a bully, and um, I'm, a, I'm a mijo buzz, but certain parts in my hood is also named off of certain shit, like, off of, like, like we got this one part of my hood, it's called the Bull Side. It's this parking lot. So it's so funny, you feel me, that it was like, I feel like everything plays this part, like me even becoming a Miho Bulls. Like, Miho was like, what the fuck? This shit called the Bull Side? This shit, this shit hard.
like when he was in when he was in my hood. But anyways, so I throw in this outfit. I come in the hood and shit. He talking to these three hood rats and shit. Like um, they see me at a distance coming in, so they they own it. Like you know, like who is that? Like and like you know, check me out and shit. So I come up close. My cousin name is Weddo. You feel me? So I'm just like. I'm like, what up with you? Everything like that. I'm, I'm wet on nephew. I shake their hand. They like, all right, well, we see you, daddy. Like, oh, you look good. Like, uh, y'all are like, I'm like, you know, I appreciate it. That nigga go say like, and on a dead homies, nigga. I know you don't got my shoes on, cuffs and shit. You got my polo shirt on and my and my pants, nigga. Go take my shit off, nigga. Go take my shit off, nigga. Everything I love, crit. Go take my shit off in front of the girls, bro. They all laughing now. I'm like, I'm like, damn, nigga. Um, like for real like that's how you do me this is family though right we family though right all right say no more like i don't need your clothes my nigga i don't need none of this shit you feel me my mom ran off with my shit when i get my shit and i come back you gonna see what i'm on like i got clothes i got fits i got my shit already i got a lot of shit i bought i don't need none of this shit you feel me i thought you was doing that shit genuinely out of the heart my nigga but it's all good it's gravy like i'm gonna remember this shit you feel me so time came along when I was sitting by myself, bro, and I was still, like, thinking, like, where the fuck can my mom be, you feel me? I was at the library, and uh, I was thinking, like, I had a backflash, like, you know, I had just prayed, like, God, give me some kind of signs to try to connect some shit and figure out where my mom is at. I remember I had a conversation with my mom, and I was like, yo, when you get off of work, where you go sleep at? She was like, my sister house in Palmdale. I was like, nigga, let me hit up my cousin in Palmdale and see if, if, if she know anything about my mom. I'm like, yo, you heard from my mom, this and that. She's like, yeah, they stay with us now. I'm like, what the fuck? So this whole time, nigga, I didn't got gunned down so many fucking times. I don't know how many times I've seen a gun at my head, my nigga. I don't know how many times, nigga, they're trying to get me in the streets, nigga. I'm, I'm walking around this fucking bitch with a big-ass backpack on me, my nigga. You mean to tell me they, they living? They living good under a roof? Like, I'm finna write my mom. I'm finna tell her how I feel. Like, you feel me? So I wrote my mom a long-ass message. And I broke it down to, like, what I was going through and how I felt. I know it made her cry, though. I know it, 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 it affected her in a way. But I just had to tell her, bro, like, in so many situations, I almost died, bro. You feel me? Like, and she don't, she didn't understand that. And she, because she's like, when she wrote me back, she wrote me and said that she did that in, in, in a way of um, allowing me to become a, a man on my own without depending on her. And it's just like, I feel you. I don't regret any of that shit, but you got to think about it like the Mexicans, all these other cultures, they don't kick their fucking kids out at 16, bro. They ride with each other. They're going to be like 20, 30 other motherfuckers all staying together. Yo, bro, in the same house, bro. In the same house. Exactly. But for some reason, our culture, when you hit 18, you got to get out. You got to you gotta get your shit on. They never abandon their kids like that, my nigga. But... I'm grateful for the process, bro, because it made me who I am. It made me street smart. It made me understand, like, my awareness when I'm outside of this motherfucker. Like, two eyes behind my back at all times, nigga. Two eyes in front of me at all times. Every other time, lick on my shoulder. When you out in public, nigga, don't be walking around with no headphones in your ear. You feel me? Like, be, be alert. So um, I'm aware of that because of my experience and shit, bro. But um, when I um, wrote my mom, she invited me to come to Palmdale. When I came to Palmdale... Like, I, when I got there, my brother and my sister ran on me. They jumped and they hugged me and shit. Like, brother, this and that. You know, they haven't seen me in, like, for, like, a cool year or so, bro. So, it was cool, like, you know, just to have that. It was emotional, too. Like, you know, I got my young ones on me and shit, this and that. And then I see my mom, and she, like, she cooked the big-ass feast for me, bro. Like, when I say, like, bro, I had so much food there. Like, my mom cooked a bunch of food. She's like, all oh, this is yours. I'm like... This shit, mine's like pies, all this shit. Nigga, shit had me like grateful as a, like grateful as fuck, bro. You feel me? So when I got in there and shit, like she was like she she went in the garage and she opened the garage. She like this all your shit. I had all my clothes in there, all my shoes in there. I was like, remember I told her when I come back, you feel me? When I get my shit, I wanna show you, nigga. So I came back. back to the hood, bro. Nigga, as soon as I stepped in that bitch, bro, like I seen him at the distance, like like on the corner block, they was all playing dice and shit, the little homies and shit. So he right there posted. He see me put his head down. He ain't even looking up. No, and I ain't doing this shit to stun on him, to flex on him, or none of that. I just came back just to show this nigga, like, look, like, you feel me? Like, you got some bread on you, cuzzo? He like, nah, like, I'm I'm linking a little bit. I got a little something, something on me right now. He, I'm like, don't even trip. Dead homies. Like, yeah, that's for you, cuzzo. Like, love you. 
like on GP, like don't trip, nigga. Like I'll never do you like how you did me. You feel me? But at the same time, just want to tell you, nigga. Like when I say we family, we really family. Like I don't maneuver like that. You feel me? But it is right. what it is. Like you feel me? I hope you enjoy your day, nigga. Keep us keep it solid. Like keep doing what you're doing. And I, I pushed out. That nigga was just like, what the fuck? He couldn't even believe it, bro. But I didn't, I didn't return like like the same energy he did on me back to him. It was just more so I was on some humble shit the way I did it. Like I still paid this nigga money and I done had to. I could have been like, nigga, nigga, what's up? Like I wasn't on that shit. I was just like chipped him off on some some other shit. You feel me? But yeah, bro, like I got into some crazy shit over my times, bro, and I'm just grateful, bro. But um, wow, like that plays a part on how I became under project, bro. Like, um, around the time um I was at the A1A project, invited me to um, the fucking um, come to his crib. And, well, no, he he gave me a ride. He was like, you need a ride home and shit. Like, so I, I jumped in the whip with him. He was like, uh, where you stay? I was like, you could just let me out right here. He was like, nigga, I'm not letting you out right here, nigga. This somebody hood. I'm like, I'm solid, nigga. Like, I'm good. He like, nigga, this is somebody hood. I'm not gonna drop you off over here. I'm like, bro, trust me, I'm solid, bro. I done been everywhere. And he like, what you mean, bro? I'm like, I don't, I'm out here because like, I don't got nowhere to stay, nigga. Like, I'm out here. Like, he like, why you never told me that, bro? Like, I'm not gonna like drop you off over here, nigga. I'm gonna just ask my mom and see if you can stay with me, nigga. Like, you feel me? I'm not gonna listen, like, like leave you out here like that, bro. Like, you should have been told me this shit. So he asked his mom and she was like, yeah, we, I can stay over there with them. So projects are bringing me to church and actually like um, showing me more of God, you feel me? So that's why I was just like, yo, this nigga giving me clothes, like um, also showing showing me showing me a comfort, bro, as more than a homie, you feel me? So I asked him like, yo, bro, is there a way that I can be twin project, you feel me? Because of the brotherhood. It was never on no like, I feel like he's better than me in crunk or none of that shit. It was the brotherhood that actually spoke to me like, Bro, I should ask this nigga, can I be his twin? And that's when we we click like that. And that's why our styles are so alike. Like far as it's like you see the similarities and shit. Mm -hmm. Everybody say that shit. And that's why we click when we do tag teams and shit. Cause I stay with him like for a long ass time, bro. That's we grew together. It was me, him, um, Chemo, Swift, you know, Swift, that's little mm -hmm. little Merit. Yep. Yeah, bro. Like, we kinda like we kinda the way I the way I met Swift was tight though. The way I met Swift was tight. I mess with because um Flash, you know Flash, OG Flash. Oh yeah, yeah, I know all them niggas, bro. All right, all right. OG Flash was like um laughing me and shit. He was showing me um some some buck shit like 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 using my using my arms and all kind of shit like with the get off. So um Flash was like, we got this session over here at this um and in this one area, it was off of Washington somewhere. So I ended up um, going over there. And um, I met uh, some other new dancers, like some other new crumpers and shit. And then Swift, he came. He came out of nowhere. Around this time, this nigga was a bounce. He was under that nigga bounce, or OG bounce. Like, not the bounce from Vegas. Like, OG bounce with the, um, he with the oh, dress. So it, was, so it was more than one of them then. Yeah, around this time, OG bounce is the bounce that's from the uh, rejects. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, with, the, with the dreads. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Okay. So Swift was under him. That nigga legendary, bro. Legendary, legendary. Like him and Project was under him. So um um that's when uh Swift came. He came. That nigga was cocky as fuck, bro. Like I hated him though. I hated him because I was just like I never seen him dance yet. But I'm like this nigga, like cocky as fuck. What's up with this nigga? Like this nigga probably didn't hear a book. This nigga was crazy, bro. Fucking nuts, bro. So we end up clicking like, like uh he he was like let me know you from schoolyard all that shit like. We we click. So um I start throwing this session um at Kennehan Park. So like a lot of times um on like Saturdays and Sundays, my mom will allow allow me to throw sessions at the crib. Like she'd cook. And then we had like pool parties and shit. All the like underground crumpers would be at my crib, bro. Like we um take the boom box and walk to the park. Um through the park, it's like a little garden field. We walk through the garden field and it's up high where the view is at and everybody be up there and sessioning with me and shit. So it starts spreading on the West side. A lot of niggas from the West all start hearing about that shit. So that's why I started meeting a lot of a lot of dope niggas, bro. Like even um my twin, um, the old the old twin show off was um Iman and Mari. Like um he recently was on tour with Lauren Hill, like um this year. So like bro's big in the music industry right now, bro. Like that's my dog, like she's my bro. But yeah, bro, he was even there that day. Like when we did it, bro, he used to always be at the crib, bro. 
But yeah, <laughs> this is some history shit about me, bro. Like dead ass, bro. Like my fucking testimony, bro. Everything played its part, bro. And I'm just um I'm grateful for the people that played a part in my life and uh watch me elevate to be where I am. But I just be like, shit like this will block out that he say he she say shit. Like, you know, cause niggas um uh, they got all got a, a different output of how they look at me when they hear my name show off, like, oh yeah, show off. That nigga like that nigga probably on some cocky shit or it's like, nah, bro, like I'm showing off my gift, my nigga. I'm showing off what I'm blessed with, bro. Like, I'm showing off like my pain, bro. I'm showing off shit that I'm going through, nigga. Like, it's way more than like me me trying to flex on niggas. Like, like mm-hmm. anytime something happened within the, the crumper game, the crump the crumpers world, and my name is brought up, the first thing niggas would be like, Oh, that nigga trying to um what did they what did he do? Um, they'd be like, Oh, this nigga this nigga trying to um, like clout chase or some shit like that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> clout chase, bro. Like I'm out the mud cause I'm out straight the from, mud. Straight I'm from the mud, the bro. Mud. You talking about clout chasing, bro. Like I'm one of the dancers that I took a year out, nigga. I'm right next to my mom in the hospital bed at home, bro. I'm laughing next to her while she's screaming out, God, take away the pain because the cancer is killing her. And I can't call 911. It's telling me it's like it's it's eating her up to the point that we can't come get her no more. What do you mean that I'm trying to clout chase, nigga? And my shit is way bigger than that, bro. I'm dancing for my emotions, nigga. I'm not chasing. I'm not on here to try to be somebody. I'm not on here to try to chase fame at all. This shit came by me that's been dedicated at this shit. Not because I'm I was so hungry to become 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 under somebody or be a top dog, nigga. This is just what I fell in love with and it helped me balance my life throughout the pain, bro, that I was going through. So that's Damn. why I just be finding it funny. Also when niggas be trying to flex on me and they like they new faces, bro. Like I really been here around the era where this shit wasn't on YouTube yet. You feel me? Like where was y'all niggas at on Broadway at Ice House? Was you there? Bro, no, you the new no, era, bro, bro, I don't know why they don't respect, like, the OGs or the people before them, bro, but it's, like, that heavy in my city, bro. Like, yeah. bro, like, they, um, like I said, I don't dance no more, but it's, like, yo, I started, I brought Crump to fucking my, this city or, like, even up, like, I even, like, even though niggas in Buffalo was getting bucked, like, Spartan and Judge and all them niggas, but, bro, like, like I had all the music and everything, bro. Like I was like far as New York, I had the connection because I just came from like mainly only me and Spartan got the uh the Cali connection, you know what I'm saying? Cause you know, later on down the line, you know, by Spartan becoming little eyes and shit, he ended up going to Cali. But I was the I was the main like nigga that that's you know what I'm saying, that far as New York that knew all this shit, bro, before anybody. Or I can have be in contact with all the niggas from Cali or like you said, niggas was on AIM, getting tracks. Like, I had all this shit, bro. So, like, these new niggas now, bro, they look at niggas like, even right now, like, bro, when I'm doing these crump interviews, bro, like, the other day I went to a session. I'm like, yo, y'all don't know, like, how many numbers I got uh, in my phone for the niggas that y'all look up to. So, I'm like, yo, I could call any of these. I could call Rascal right now. I could call Hurricane right now. You know what I'm saying? I could call Rex and all these niggas, bro. I'm like, yo, I got, just because I don't dance no more, you know, I'm still in the movement. You know what I'm saying? I've still got friendships and shit with niggas, bro. But, yeah, bro, it's like the new era niggas, they don't respect shit from, like, the OGs or... And it's like, yo, y'all niggas coming at the, the whack time of crump, bro. Like, all this shit is Hollywood now. Like, y'all ain't been through yeah, this shit bro. with niggas dancing yeah, on niggas' houses, bro. Niggas spending the night at niggas' houses, waking up, sessioning all night. Like you said, niggas catching buses and trains to go lab. Niggas going from city to city. You know what I'm saying? Going to events. Like, the events now ain't shit like how the events was back in the day, bro. Yeah, and I, I wish Crump would be like how I used to be. Niggas are too scary to go out of their own atmosphere. Like, they'll be like, hey, that's run rounds, but you got to come to me. All right, I'll come to you, but that's not dance at the same place y'all always dance at. Let's go somewhere else. Let's meet right. up halfway. Let's go behind Jack in the Box, behind this parking lot. Let's go over here. Let's go over there. Back in the days... Nigga, it'll be on site, nigga. I, I got off on a nigga in Six Flags, nigga. <laughs> and Six Flags in a line, bro. Like, we ain't, we finna get on Goliath or something like that, man. It's another nigga. I think they was from 661. I was beefing with them around the time, and um, they was in a line. I'm like, nigga, I know this ain't the nigga that's on my hit list. I'm like, hey, bro, like, they're homies. I'm finna catch a body. 
hey, bro, you got your little B pill with you? He like, yeah. I'm like, what's, what you trying to do? I'm like, bro, I'm finna bottle this nigga. I'm dead ass. Like, I don't give a fuck about us being at the theme park, bro. We finna find a cut over here. We finna get that shit in. Dead homies. Like, cause I was taking this shit like really like I was fading niggas, bro. Like, cause I was going through shit. So it was like, my right. stage was just like, bro, I'm going there. I'm going, I'm not finna start here. I'm going all the way there, bro. Cause I'm going through shit. So I don't give a fuck, bro. That's run it up. We had a bunch of people circle around us and shit. We was in a cut, just battled it out. Like niggas, like they hashtagged it and um, the coverage page, like, yo, this nigga show off is crazy, bro. This nigga bottled a nigga in Six Flags, bro. Like, what the fuck? Like, this nigga's tripping, bro. I will bottle a nigga anywhere. That's why I said, like, niggas forget, bro. I got access to fly anywhere I want to fly to at any given time. Like, so when you start talking shit about me, you forget that I can come to your ass. Like, that's why I'm saying, like, I enjoy it when I start seeing people give me feedback, when people voice their opinions and all this shit. It's cool. It's just like, you know, everybody gonna have their, like, disagreements and agreements and all that shit, but it's just like, if you start talking behind your, behind on some, like, some filthy shit, nigga, I'm gonna eventually figure out who you are and where you stay, and I'm gonna come to you, bro. I'm gonna come yeah, get bro. you. I'm yeah, serious. Bro. Same shit yeah. what happened with me, bro. That, that's how me, the first time my interaction was sparring, bro. We, uh, I ended up doing an event here in my city, and then, like I said, all them from Buffalo, Spartan, Judge, and all them cats came to the, uh, the event here. But they didn't know that I was, like, far as, like, uh, like heavy in the crump shit. They thought that they was the only niggas, like, far as that new, like, crump and all this shit, bro. So the niggas, my, one of my little homies was, like, you know, on some friendly shit, like, yo, y'all want to batter our crew? So this nigga Spartan was like, oh, oh, we'll kill y'all off right now. So like, me having the same attitude as you, I'm like, nigga, what? I'm like, fuck this event, nigga. We finna go in this hallway or, or outside and get it on. Bro, I ended, like, nigga, the, set, the whole fucking event ended up getting shut down because niggas thought we was gonna fight. I'm like, nah, this strictly dancing. I was like, yo, I'm not waiting until these break dancing niggas dance. I'm like, yo, we finna cook these niggas right now, bro. Like, yo, yeah. so every time I seen Spartan and all them niggas, bro, it didn't, I didn't give a fuck where we was at, bro. Like, ask them niggas, bro. It was on, bro. And that's yeah. what they was... They that on-site, bro. That on-site butt is the shit, bro. That Yo, bro, butt. that's the best shit, bro. You don't need you don't need three months to prepare for a nigga. Nah, you hell no. Nah. You don't need weeks to prepare for a nigga. Believe in yourself or have that fucking confidence, nigga. Have fun, bro. This shit is fun, bro. It shouldn't take you a long-ass time to actually prepare for anybody, bro. I just say, like, be more prepared so you won't have to be prepared, nigga. Like, just be on your shit. This shit then became a lifestyle to me, though. Like, yep. like majority of those those battles of Kill Frankie and and um, Kill Bill, like, nigga, swear to God, like, probably I lied and everything. Like, you feel me? Like, I'm literally in Costa Rica chilling with my girl and shit, and I'm plotting. I'm like, these niggas is really popping off. I'm watching Kill Bill go live, like, pull up on me. Pull up on me. I'm like, bro, I'm in Costa Rica. I just landed because... Like, I'm gonna pull up on you. I'm gonna pull up on you. And then, like, <laughs> kill kill Frankie. He jump on the um on the covers page, say his little two cents on this post. Like, yada, yada. I'm like, okay. All right, bro. I'm really going through all this shit. And y'all niggas is still like, like, I y'all probably don't know I'm going through this, but still, nigga, like, I'm gonna let this shit out on both of y'all niggas when I get back. As soon as I got right. back, bro, I just did it too, like, two and two. Like, fuck it. Like, uh, I'm gonna battle kill Frankie. I had to do a connection flight to, um, from Cali to go back to Miami. I was like, that's that's Wednesday already. I might as well just get Kill Bill out the way. Like, just, just get it over with, both of these niggas. When I was battling, I was trying to lap the whole entire day for Kill Bill, like, before we battled. But um, Thrills called me. He's like, bro, like, you need to chill, bro. Like, like I think you should rest, nigga. You straight off a flight again, bro. Like, like you, you need to sleep, nigga. You got to sleep, G. And I'm like, damn, I ain't even think about that. Like, I'm just like, I'm going to rip this nigga. I'm trying to run around, nigga. Right, right, bro. I'm like, I ain't even thinking about no rest. I get off the plane, nigga. I'm like, I hit up Adrena. You know, that's rogue. I'm like, yo, sis, where you at? She's like, um, I'm at the crib. Like, what's up? I'm like, man, you got the amp and stuff over there. I'm going to come over to the crib. I'm going to laugh. She's like, all right, slide through, nigga. Then when he called me and told me, like, bro, just go to sleep, bro. You need to sleep the entire day, bro. Do not laugh, bro. Go your ass to sleep. So when I get to the 818, nigga, we at the 818 around, like, probably, like, 10 o'clock, bro. Like, I got hooligans calling me, like, 
nigga, where the fuck you at, bro? Like, niggas is all here, bro. You ain't even here, bro. Like, where you at, nigga? I'm like, nigga, I'm here, bro, but I'm just asleep. <laughs> I'm in the car. I'm right on the corner, nigga. I'm in the car. Knock the fuck out, nigga. I'm not, I'm not at all, bro. So um, I think my nigga Scrams called me, pressing me, like, nigga, get your ass up, nigga. We here, nigga. What the fuck? Like, how you, how we here? You ain't here. I'm like, nigga, I'm here. Dead homies, I'm here. I'm just in the car, bro. I just got up. I'm about to smoke this blunt, and we go get it cracking. So I get out the car. Miss Prissy right there with Miho. Got Solo right there. Got East Miho right there. Um, Chow Miho. They all right there in the squad. They like, um, nigga, there you go. Like, niggas was all looking for you and shit. Like, what's the deal? Like, where you was at? I was like, shit, nigga, I was in the car. Knocked off. Like, like not at all. Like, Miss Prissy started dying. She was like, didn't I just say that? She was like, I just told you that. Like, on everything I love, I was like, if I was this nigga and I just came back from overseas, bro, I'm for sure on demon time. I'm knocked the fuck out somewhere. Like, he sleeps somewhere. This nigga sleep. I'm straight up just waking up, bro, and it's got it cracking, bro. Like, I'm going to get this shit cracking real quick. He'll get it rolling. And we just we just went in, bro. So that's why I just be laughing at, like, majority of the time when these niggas, like, show up, do the same move, or show up, do this, this, and that. Like, once you get around me and you see this shit, you going to see, bro, it's unlimited bro, with me, bro. It's for bro, real, that all, be, that, all, that all be niggas that just be hating, too, bro. Or just trying I don't to understand, bro. Too, bro. <laughs> I don't understand. I'm like, bro, I don't have it in me to hate on another dancer, bro. I, I, and then we all love the same shit, so it'd be ass backwards. Bro. All like, the same shit, you, bro. You hate on a nigga that's representing the same shit you represent, crunk. Like, what are you all doing, bro? Same, all in the same movement, bro. That should be weird to me, bro. Well, I, I, I really appreciate this shit, though, bro. Like, on everything I love, bro, like, this shit was, like, definitely dope, bro. We talked about some real shit. Like, um, I would like to do this shit again, bro. Like, for real, for real. Like, yeah, bro. Cool. Like, I, like I told you, bro, man, I'm always available, bro. Always open, man. And damn, bro, man, like, I was expecting to talk about some other shit. But you know what's dope, bro, is that some of y'all crumpers that's coming on, bro, Y'all letting people like into y'all lives, bro, instead of just talking about strictly like dancing shit. Like, just like your testimony that you just gave, bro, that's like crazy, bro. I wasn't even expecting none of that, bro. Yeah, bro, shit. I didn't even so, know I was going to talk about that shit. I'm drinking this shit. It's just coming out, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. You, you know what they say when you drink, bro? You, you speak in real facts, though. Yeah, shit. You ain't never lied, bro. You ain't never lied. Oh, uh, this is the last thing I wanted to talk to y'all about, too, bro. Like, um, I wanted to tell y'all the situation with my dad, bro. Like, cause a lot of people don't really know the story about my dad. Like my other name, you probably hear Miho say it a lot, like 25 bars. Like when I was dancing versus Kill Bill, he kept saying that like 25 bars, like this and that, whatever. Like, mm -hmm. um, I, I got that name I, basically because my dad is serving 25 to life in prison behind false charges with a murder case um, behind his girlfriend. So my pops, like he a big rep, you feel me in the streets, you feel me out there from Watts. And my dad um, left out of my life at the age of 18. So he been in jail for shit, bro. 25 to life, more, more than 25, like 27. So his time is already served. He's supposed to got out this year. And they still holding him in because he got into fights and shit. So my thing is when my dad, like, you know, my dad was like trying to go to this party and shit. Like, you know, was out there in New Orleans and shit. He was trying to take his girl out there. And go and actually experience this party and shit. Like it's not the Mardi Gras, but it's like it's popping like that. It's real live out there and shit. So he tell his girl, her name is Robin. She was a young girl too. So he tell her like he go um bring her out here so she can experience it. So my grandma like you know she she passed when I you know the battle when I battle ruin. Mm -hmm. My mom that was his mom. Like she she passed around the time I went to go teach a workshop in London before I um battle ruin. My grandma his his mom passed which is my grandma. So anyways, um, she was telling him she shouldn't go. He should actually stay on the west side. Like, she had a bad feeling about him going that far out because they were prejudice on black people. Mm -hmm. So my dad didn't listen. He just wanted his girl to experience that party life and shit. So he went out there anyways. They get to the club. He come in. He got a couple niggas that's like um, trying to like rub up on his girl and shit. Like, so my father's like, hey, my nigga, like, chill out. Like, you know, this is my woman. Y'all niggas chill, everything like that, and they not having it. Like, you feel me? Like, so they, they want to fight, you feel me? So my dad, he get in with them niggas, they fighting, and then they start shooting at my dad. So my dad starts shooting at them, and then randomly, um, the girl jumped in front of the bullet, and she, she got shot in the head. Like, when they were shooting at 
Dude, now my dad, she jumped in front of the bullet for him, bro. She 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 murked herself. She died in, she died on sight, G. So when that happened, um, when the police came, um, the police came and they was asking everybody at the club like what had happened, like what went down. Everybody was pointing fingers at like like my dad and the other dude, like these two dudes are shooting and everything like that. Yada yada. yada. So but when the police came in, they see my dad over this young girl with blood all over him. So it, in a way. You come in and you, you doing your job and it looks like my dad did that, but and and all and 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 then when you when you actually how can I say get the full details and the full information about which bullet was belong to what gun, the bullet didn't belong to the gun that my dad had. It was the other guy, but because my dad already had shit on his file and everything like that, and he wasn't from New Orleans, they decided to hold him in. They blackmailed my pops, bro. And the um, girl parents have full custody over what they wanted to do with my dad. Either give him three strikes, he'd still be out of jail and shit. You feel me? Or they give him the death penalty, the death chair, or 25 to life. So her parents decided to give him 25 to life because they was like, he was in full responsibility to take their girl, their daughter out of the West Side over there and, and not even make it back. You feel me? Damn, so bro. my dad been serving time all this time, basically, because they saying he murdered his own girlfriend, which is false. So it's like, um, my dad didn't have money and shit buried and shit in the, in the woods and shit that like, get him out and everything like that, bro. He told his family and shit where it was, all this shit, bro. And they went to go find a, um, get the money and shit, and they bought themselves cars and houses and everything like that. And then Sony gave that nigga, like, bird seeds, like $500. So, That's crazy. Bro. So he didn't have uh, enough to get the right lawyers and all that. And the lawyer that he did get, they was in it with the ops, bro. So they took the money from him, and bro, he's still trying to get a get a lawyer right now. So that's that's something that I'm battling with, bro. I'm still working at the airlines right now. Like this is like my life in general is just all been a blessing, bro. Like no cap. Like I didn't get the job to work at the airlines until my mom died. When my mom died, I got called to um, actually work at the airlines. The first time they called me, I rejected the call because I was working security. So I already had a little studio like downtown, um, downtown LA. I had my own little studio and shit. They called me and shit, and I'm like, um, you know, I needed a second job. So I'm just like, you don't know how much um, you know how much I, how much I uh, do y'all like um, you know, charge an hour hourly, and they like eleven dollars an hour. I'm like, hell no, you feel me? Like I get paid thirteen an hour doing security. Why would I go down less? You feel me? Like, I don't know about that one. So I rejected the offer. And um, the manager, like, he knew they'd get paid more than that. He just didn't want to tell me. He wanted to see if I really wanted to work. You feel me? So that's why they didn't tell me. So they called back a second time. And I was just hungry to get a second job because I was living off of rent by rent, like, off of check by check. You feel me? Like, mm -hmm. it was hard. Like, I only had enough to get groceries. And then that was it, nigga. Like, I'm paying for the Wi-Fi and shit like that. After that, nigga, I'm like, shit, bro, trying to make it happen, bro. But no, yeah. no cap, though. Crump came through a couple times, bro. Like, when I needed to pay the rent, like, I would do, like, like online, like, workshops and shit with random niggas overseas, and they had to cash at me some... Well, cash app wasn't out yet. Like, but they will, um, they will PayPal me some money, and that shit helped me pay my rent a couple times, nigga. So the students that I did have that come through and blessed me with that was crazy. I was like, damn, these niggas are actually paying for me to, like, teach them online, and they was actually coming through, sending me money, bro, and that was helping me get, get the rent out the way. So I'm grateful for Crump, bro. I'm grateful for the transition that I got, like me being blessed with the job and shit. It took a minute, bro. It took a minute to bounce back, though, because like losing losing a parent, it could be traumatizing, bro. Like, you feel me? I lost my mom. Once I lost my mom, I went mute for like two months. I wasn't talking to nobody. I wasn't saying shit to anybody. Like, it just took me a long time to be able to accept it, bro. Like, damn, I can't call mm -hmm. her no more. I, like, that was like my biggest supporter, you feel me? So once I was able to accept it and acknowledge it, like, you know, I got to continue to move, bro. Not just like, I stopped doing my music for two years because because of that. And then um, I stopped crumping and I started really game banging. Like once that really happened and like everything got corrected, bro, where I got in a better mindset to understand like, yo, I'm bigger than all this. Like I got a calling, like I, I need to get myself in line right. Like, bro, get back on track. All my homies just, just start questioning me like, bro, like, Yo, bro, you got an album coming out? Like, what's up with your music, bro? You still doing music? 
I'm like, damn, these niggas fuck with my music. Like, like I didn't even, even know niggas fuck with my music like that. They like, nigga, nah, bro, your shit hard, bro. Like, you should just, like definitely stay on that shit, bro. Don't stop doing that shit. So I'm like, all right, well, I'm gonna get back on my music. I didn't know I had people that was fucking with my wave. So um, with the dancing, like, it's like, how can I say, like, a couple of the homies just kept guiding me, like, bro, stop going to the hood. Like, the main nigga that helped me get out of going back to the set with Chosen. And Chosen is the opposite of me. He a blood. You feel me? So, and the grace of God, like, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful for Chosen. He, he played a big part of helping me get out of that mindset of like, yo, bro, I don't supposed to be over here. I got a calling and I'm, I'm not following the calling that I got. You know, like, he's like, um, I think I met him at an event. And uh, when I met him at an event, well, I just told this nigga, like, yo, bro, when you battle um, this one nigga, um, Gerald, like, uh, at the call of book, oh my god, bro! I watched that video over and over and over. Like, yo, who the fuck is this nigga? This nigga is crazy. Cause I ain't never seen him before. Like when I seen Chosen Style, I was like, this nigga is so crunk. Like, how nobody is not talking about him? Like, bro, this nigga nuts. So like, I watch him every day. Like, I nobody really knew, but Clash, Weez, Chosen. Like, I was watching them niggas so many times. Like this at home. Like these niggas is really like their their crump is inspiring to me. So when I met him at an event, I walked up to him and told him this, and this nigga was like, get my number, my nigga, like, we go, we go, we go, we go chop it up, really, like, you feel me? I'm like, all right, for sure, like, so he, he was calling me, like, every day, bro, when I was in the hood, he was like, get from over there, nigga, you don't need to be over there, like, like, if anything, you could come over here, like, I'm like, where's over there? He's like, nigga, I'm in the IE, I'm like, the IE, I never even heard of that shit, he like, <laughs> Inland Empire, nigga, like, just come your ass over here, like, don't be over there, nigga, like, I don't want no shit to go down, you feel me? You end up getting popping man over there around the wrong wrong time and shit, you feel me? And he 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 ain't lying, bro. Like since I haven't been back to the hood, it's been a body dropping every every month, bro. You feel me? And like every month, bro. No cap. No cap. So like um I went back over there. I went back over there with Chosen and um I met his wife and shit like that. And they let me stay with them for like a month or two. So Chosen broke down to me like like the language of crump and how to dance off your emotions, how to dance off of your pain. Cause like I'll I'll be dancing off of anger because I'm mad. Like you feel me? Like nigga, I'll be getting beat by my mom, all this crazy shit. Nigga, I'm dancing off of anger. He showed me how to dance off of those feelings instead of just being mad and swinging my arms and shit. Like actually apply it in a way, like so people can understand it. Like I'm like, yo, this nigga a genius. Cause he didn't show me hands on. He just voiced it to me and allowed me to understand. Like you feel me? And the way he was like laughing me, the nigga is a genius, bro. Chosen is a genius. The way he was laughing me was it, it made me mad as fuck at times because it's like um like I could take criticism of course. Some dancers can't. I can, but it's just like when when you trying to tell me something to do and it's like I don't like it, I don't wanna do it. Like you feel me? He keep mm -hmm. telling me that um to say the words, like you feel me, listen to the words in the track. Like if I was saying like some crazy shit like more power or this and that, this and that, all yep, that yep. bullshit in this track. You like start saying the words with your get off and shit, like or with your let your arms say it or whatever. And I'd be like, I don't wanna do that shit. I'm not doing that shit. Like <laughs> that shit was me mad. He's like, listen to me, bro. I'm not trying to control your your book, bro. I just want you to understand the language, bro. Like, so he a pit this like it's like this weird ass thing. Like uh, I'll be in the center of the floor and he'd put like chairs and shit around me. Like, so I can, I couldn't use a lot of space. It was a small ass space. And he was like, now you gotta make that space big. Like you gotta use your travels and everything. Make it, don't be in the same spot. Like this dancing in a box. I want you to use that whole fucking floor. But it's barely any space, but he's like, use all that shit to your highest advantage. Make that shit book. And I'll do wow. that shit for hours, 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 bro. That was my first time actually ever having 24 hour labs, like with Chosen. Like he he makes his lab for like 24 hours. Like we start at 10 in the morning, we end at fucking like the next day till the sun come up. You know, so like, bro, it was just amazing. Once we get out those labs, nigga would feel unbeatable, bro. But thanks to my bro, like he showed me a lot with the language, bro. And um, a lot of people don't know the reason why Chosen is a, uh, um, in a Miho buzz is because I played the part in that. But Chosen didn't want to be under Miho. He didn't want to be a be in a, be in a, be a bull, bro. I just I influenced him that I think this will actually be something good for him in his dance career if he actually go under Miho 
and and uses this lane. Like I think I definitely think it will be beneficial to him. And I think him and Miho will click good as brothers. I just right. seen how his personality was, and I seen how Miho's was, and I was like, bro, these niggas need to meet. These like I he met on before, but they ain't never chopped it up and really talked, bro, like his bros. So um we was at a hooligan session and um I called Miho when I was with Chosen and I told Miho about him. I showed Miho like clips of him and shit when he used to be on the concrete and like other random ass clips and Miho's like tripping out, running in the kitchen like, nigga, who the fuck is this? This nigga's crazy. I'm like, you don't know about Chosen? He's like, nigga, I don't, I, don't, I never seen this nigga. I'm like, he a big nigga. I'm like, yeah, bro. Like this nigga with the shit, like, like <laughs> he with the shit, bro. Ain't he from the set, like for real, nigga, he with the shit. He like, yeah. He like, all right, all right, for sure, for sure. I'm going to meet this nigga. I want to meet this nigga. So I told Chosen, like, the big homie want to meet you, bro. So I'm going to call this nigga. If he pick up, we going to slide over there so y'all can I can sit down and, and meet each other and talk. So right. um, when that happened, bro, like, um, after the hooligan session, we, um, Miho was like, man, come through. I was like, all right, for sure, we over there. So we came over there and shit, like. And them niggas, like, got to sip with each other and just talk, bro, and just, like, chop it up, bro. That day I had them niggas dying laughing because this nigga, um, this nigga Owl, this nigga Young Tree Bully, this nigga had um, sent me some funny-ass photos of me, ho, so I had some dirty work on this nigga. Like, like <laughs> I was telling this nigga, I was like, because like, we know him for shooting on each other. Like, mm -hmm. it just as a fam, we be bagging on each other, like, all the time. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Right, right. So, like, um, I'm telling me, ho, like, you really don't want to do that right now, bro. Like, just, just stop me out, bro, because I don't want to, I don't want to embarrass you right now, bro. Like, just chill on the joke in the day, bro, because I got some shit, shit that'll embarrass you, bro. Like, chill. He like, nigga, what the fuck? It chose it looking like the fuck this nigga talking about. I'm like, bro, I'm telling you, I got some fire on your ass right now, bro. Just chill, bro. He like, nigga, show me. I'm like, I don't want to do that, bro. If I do that, bro, I'm telling you, bro, you you gonna be embarrassed, so, nigga. He like, nigga, show me, nigga. So I pulled out the photos, nigga. And that nigga like, that's me. <laughs> nigga, we over there dying. All of us on the balcony dying, laughing, bro. We smoking and lighting and shit. Just cracking up. So I get them their time and just let them talk to each other, get to know each other and shit. And that shit just went well, bro. They clicked like that, bro. Like, the niggas clicked instantly, bro. I didn't think he was going to be uh, NL, though. I didn't know what he was going to be. I was, I ain't gonna cap, nigga. I was hoping he was gonna come to the street side, like, oh, nigga, he gonna be a street bully, yes, nigga. Like, what, nigga? He went to the, uh, the NL side, so I was like, it fit him more though, cause um, the character, that scarecrow character, right, just the right, way right. He himself, it, it goes more. Like, he, the way he danced with the suspenders, it all goes. So I was just like, damn, nigga, I really wanted him to be a street bully though. Like, I, I just had it in my head, like, oh, that nigga come to this side, it be booked, nigga. But that was it. That was it, bro. That's all my yeah. stories, nigga. Shit, I'm Damn, right. bro. That's dope, bro, man. Man, yo, show, man. You blessed us with some, like, man, you about to reach a lot of people, bro. Because, like I said, it's going to go on a, uh, Spotify and YouTube, bro. So, niggas that's checking this, bro. Like, you don't know, bro. Like, it's a lot of people that's currently going through some of the same situations that me and you uh went through. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully... You know, we can help, you know, save a life or, you know, just get a nigga through a lot of shit, bro. Because a lot of a lot of people be having that pride issue, bro. But, like, reach out, get help, bro. Like, don't hold a lot of shit in, man. Because, you know, we all human. We going through shit. So, you know, especially if you can find some real niggas, bro, or a real family member that can help you out, bro. Like, real, man. Like, you got to have me teary-eyed, bro, today because that shit brought back memories, you know what I'm saying? Like hearing your story and that was the same like i walked that same path that you did bro so that shit you know brought back memories bro real shit man i definitely appreciate you you know damn man like yo this was a dope this was by far the best crop interview i didn't have like i didn't have hey, like bro. Ten appreciate times, it, bro. Appreciate this is by it, far bro. the best that I, i've had bro because like i said like a lot of people like they've been touching on like their real life but the way how me and you went in depth bro and it's like showing us a side of you that, like you said, people don't know. And, you know, it's getting a chance for you to tell your story too, bro. Real shit, man. Like, yo, man, definitely appreciate you, bro. And I'm glad, like, you even trusted me, bro, like, when I reached out to you, bro. Like, I was shocked that you called, bro, because, you know, some people I ain't even going front, bro, that I reach out to. A lot of people, but, like, they say they doing it and then they act like you got a motive. It's like, nah, bro. Like, like I said, I used to dance and, like, you know what I'm saying? The, uh, my, my crew was like, yo, bro, 
add Crook to your podcast, bro, and then start reaching out to niggas, bro, and they're like, have niggas share their story or experience that can, you know, help people if, either in real life or with just in dance. So, you know, that's what I've been doing, bro, just reaching out to niggas on a crump form or people that I know in general fires through crump. Be like, yo, pull up on the, you know, my show, bro, and then let niggas know, like, even in, even if it is free promo, bro, like, if, you know, it's got some uh, dancers that do music, sell clothes, it's like, yo, come on and let everybody know what you got going on, man. Hopefully, you know, you can uplift your business or, you know, just let niggas know, you know what I'm saying, what you got going on. But, yeah, man, this is this was dope today, bro. And like I said, bro, this shit touched me for real, bro, because, man, hey, man. Bro, much shit, respect, bro. bro. Much respect, bro. That's why I made the transition uh, to leave the west side, bro, to come to Miami, bro, because I wanted to get away from my family, bro, like just get away from that lifestyle, bro, and start over fresh where I can actually follow my calling, bro. Like, and it's been better, bro. Like, I understand that I'm called to dance, to inspire other people to want to dance. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I understand that um, these studios that I'm linked with right now, the studio that I'm going to is where Meek Mills has dropped the album Dream Chaser at. So it's just like, this is out here in Miami. I knew that I didn't want to keep flying to visit the studio. I was like, if I live here, it's a wrap. Eventually, someone wants somebody go walk by the studio and hear me. You feel me? And it's like, I'm not chasing to be rich, bro. Like, I'm not chasing that shit at all. Like, I just want to be wealthy, bro, because I come from a poor family. You feel me? Right. So that's the only thing I'm I'm after, bro. A house, a wife, kids, bro. And like, you know, for me, yeah, a solid whip. That's about it. I ain't really asking for too much, bro. That's yeah. My, that's my shit. Yeah, I'm definitely yep. going to send the blessings and po positive energy towards your way, bro. You know what I mean, man? Yeah, yo, bro, man, trust me, man, like, just for you being, you know, just a black man to survive all the shit that you went through, bro, man, you know, I'm just happy for you, bro, man, and keep believing, bro, and yo, bro, you, you just set an example for a lot of people, bro, trust me, man, a lot of people, bro, even, even with me, bro, I just, you know, I just matured a little bit more, like, just hearing some of the shit you went through, and it's like, yo, it's just dope that, you know, like, if you meet somebody, bro, you know, share some shit, bro. Maybe they going through the same shit as you. So you kind of like opening up uh, a wave as far as like me being so like, uh, how can I say it? Like, you know, guarded, you know what I'm saying? Now I, you make it more comfortable, but like, yo, bro, now I can come on my show and, and, and share stories instead of just listening to everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Facts, nigga. Facts, nigga. Like, yeah, bro, but like, nigga, I, I'm, I'm grateful for this shit, bro. Like, I, I think um one of the times that I think that showed like some real like 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 I think it's this flyer like I'm gonna try to like see if I can post it to you bro. It was uh me and Shakes versus um Weapon and um it was like Weapon and um uh, Riot. Like this 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 recently happened I think last year or a year before. I think it was last year, bro. It happened last year, but nigga like that 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 day you could see how happy i was bro when i flyer nigga i'm like smiling and shit like everybody else like grimy as fuck but you see me i'm just like cheesing and shit like because i nigga this is like my freedom bro like i understand what i could have been i understand my backstory and i'm like i'm i'm able to be in these events and actually allow my street side to still show when i'm actually i got it to a point where i'm controlling my my ways bro like you feel me like I'm allowed to be a, like hood and shit, but in a dance world, you feel me? I'm not going mm -hmm. out here hitting licks and doing no crazy shit like that, you feel me? Right. Yo, bro, you already know what it is, bro. It's yeah, bro, man. You always welcome. You always welcome to the show, bro. You know, if you want to do a part two, or bro, if you when you do your music or anything you got going on, bro, just send that shit to me, bro. And like I said, I'll be spreading that shit out everywhere. Right now, you know, I got your y'all, you and me, whole flyer popping. So niggas can know oh, yeah, to be in yeah, two yeah, yeah, yeah. classes, bro. Yeah, September the 17th. Niggas, tune in, bro. We going to be teaching some buck shit, bro. Like, I'm going to actually lab right now and start working on some shit, bro. But yeah, bro, me and Miho going to teach some shit for the community. So if niggas just want to, like, learn and shit, go to um, definitely the um, MyStreetCulture.co page and shit, bro. Get a spot, bro. Sign up for a spot. Let's get it All popping, right. niggas. Right. Yes, sir. Right, thanks, bro. Yo, thanks for coming on, bro. Me and a lot, bro. You already know, niggas. We out here, bro. All right, salute. All right, G. Yes, sir.